Ladies and gentlemen, there are only 34 days left. It's amazing. In fact, less than 34 days, it's like 33 and a half days. Dr. Steve Pachenik's joining us in the third hour to talk about the de-evolution of power. Uh, if the federal government continues to be seized by organized criminals, how do we legally and lawfully block that and try to reverse that? I was here until five in the morning yesterday, and I was very honored to be here. And we're live on this Tuesday, the fourth day of October, 2016, worldwide broadcast. Uh, the public got trolled. I got trolled by Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks has done a lot of good work over the years. It's also done some weird, questionable things. Uh, but I have the news articles here, and I'm going to go over some. I'm not going to spend much of the show on this. Where Assange a month ago said, within one week, I will release information that will get Hillary indicted. That's a quote. I have the other quotes here saying, the information will lead to her indictment. I talked to folks that talked directly with him. The same stuff I've been saying before, that it would be damning, that it would be uh, very, very serious. There's the headline, WikiLeaks planning to release enough evidence to indict Hillary Clinton Breitbart. Let's, let's look at the date of that article, because I've got scores of them uh, here in front of me. And that was back June 14th. So I say he's been saying this for four weeks. I mean, he's been saying it for three, four months. But the last month or so, intensifying, always saying next week, next week, next week. And then they did leak the information that this was going to be the big kahuna. And then with a smile on his face, he said, for those of you wanting the big leak, we don't do that at 3 a.m. That's exactly when you do it, so that when the newspapers and TV stations all go in at that time in the morning, like they're there even earlier than that, about midnight, they're all there peaked at about 3 or 4 a.m. Paul Watson publishes a lot of his stories at 3 or 4 or 5 a.m. That's the very best time, actually. And I'm not going to sit here and bitch about Julian Assange. In fact, I'm not embarrassed that we came here uh, and that basically Assange gave us a wedgie or pulled our pants down. He's the one that did that. I'm proud of the crew coming up here uh, and working 20 hours yesterday. Same crew that ran the daytime show, the same crew that ran the nightly news, ran that four-hour uh, special last night. But I do have to say that it was a setup because he's been stringing people along. He did it again and then started holding up a book, a new book he's written. I mean, I think Assange has either basically been promised a deal. We know he's been asking for a deal been pushing for a deal. Or he's so disconnected from TV production and how things look and how the Internet works. I mean, it's easy to get a bunch of documents from sources and then make yourself a clearinghouse comparatively to actually being dominant on the internet, say like a Matt Drudge or an InfoWars. And I'm just saying, it's a fact. I mean, the production was worse than an access television show. Most of it you couldn't hear. And Darren McBreen asked the question last night when we were walking out the door at like 5.15 in the morning. He said, Alex, you get the feeling that was done on purpose to look horrible? And I got to tell you, it's hard to come off that bad. It's hard to have a production that atrocious. Maybe Assange, an hour into it, was watching it on Skype, was watching the feed and said, this is so horrible, I'm not going to do it here. I mean, I'm hoping. Listen, Assange, you've been dragging people along since June. So how many months is that? June, July, August, September? October? Let me see. June, July, August, September. I mean, that's amazing. We're talking four months or so. You have been stringing us along in the month of June. In the month of July, in the month of August, the month of September, we're now in October. It's four months into this, brother, and you say you have damning evidence, and then everybody's like, Roger Stone said it would be damning, and Roger Stone's discredited. I'm not even defending Roger Stone, but I know some of the same folks that were talking to WikiLeaks, they were telling people, get ready, it's the biggest thing ever. They were sharing emails with Stone about information, and so I don't know what is going on, but it's bad news. We'll be back. I have really put on my thinking cap in the last 48 hours. And I know how to defeat the globalist. We have the initiative. We have the history. We have the facts. We have justice and God on our side. We will prevail. But changing this world will be an inside job, just like it always is.
Thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm going to get to the grand trolling of Julian Assange of the public yesterday, just on a case point example, and, and then ask the question, is the big data dump uh, really coming? Assange keeps Hillary hanging. WikiLeaks boss says he won't publish his stash of one million secret documents today, but he promises they'll be out before the election. Actually, we were here live covering it last night with the crew. He said, you don't think I'm going to release something at 3 a.m., do you? No, I just implied that and said that all over the news for months since June. He said, I'll release the data rolling out by the end of the year. That's what he said. He did not say he'd release it before the election. He also said he was not plotting to bring down Hillary. Really, he'd been saying she needed to be brought down, that she was a, quote, demon, wanted to put the media's neck in a noose. So a major reversal by Julian Assange. And they either got to him or he thinks this is how you, you, you troll. And then at the end of the most boring two hours you could imagine, uh, plug his book. That's not how you do it. You come out, you drop the bombshell. You say, hey, we're risking our lives here. We need legal defense. This is a powerful book. Buy it. And then people would have bought it by the millions. But what do I know? I just built a major media operation. Assange can't even seem to do a production better than the worst access television program I've ever seen. And, and I'm not even trying to demonize Assange here. He's done a lot of great work. His organization overall has done a lot of great work. I think overall the guy's a hero. That's why when you see some chumping like this and these weird, really trendy uh, reporters, they all came off pretty bad except for his lawyer came off pretty good. Assange looked like he was on a power trip. I mean, the thing was a train wreck. And, of course, I was up here for four hours covering it live uh, on th you know two and a half hours sleep. I went to bed at like 9.30, slept till about midnight or so. But this was just, just really obnoxious. And, uh, again, I want to be clear that I'm getting all the news. I'm not going after Assange because I'm butthurt that he trolled me. I'm proud of the fact that I got up in the middle of the night and came down here with my crew, and they did a fabulous live teleprompter-free, uh, almost four-hour transmission. I'm proud of the rest of the crew and the graphics people and the, and the editors and the researchers and investigative journalists, people like Kit Daniels and others. Uh, and, and Markel Thalen that were up here working 20 hours yesterday. I'm proud of you tuning in by the millions, over a million people on our stream and the YouTube stream, separate from radio stations that picked it up. That's a big deal. Middle of the night, a million people chose to come watch our streams, and, and it's, it's going to be two million by tonight watching the archive, but that's a big deal. You know, we'll have the regular audience of three, four million a day conservatively just on terrestrial radio, but it's very, very, very uh, exciting to see what's unfolding and what's happening around the world as so many people tune out of mainstream media. So Drudge is calling it the wiki tease, and, and, and maybe Assange has got some method to his madness, so I'm going to say this. If he releases the damning evidence he says will, quote, lead to the indictment of Hillary in the next 20 days or so, because it'll be pretty much worthless if it's not done at least, you know, two weeks out from the election, then, and if it ends up defeating this monster or contributes to it in a big way, then I salute WikiLeaks. But it was DC Leaks and others uh, that put out information that would have brought Hillary down if the public ever saw it or, or cared to read it that no one picked up on. We did, Drudge did, and others, but mainstream media didn't. And then WikiLeaks finally republished it, and that got attention. So WikiLeaks now is like the stereotypical leak site. It's like the... It's like search engines are called Googling it. You know, they don't say go to a search engine, they say Google it. Well, people say WikiLeak it. And WikiLeaks gets a lot of credit for organizations out there that have actually done the work. I mean, we released uh, secret documents and information yesterday about Gaddafi trying to uh, give up to the leader of the Congressional Black Caucus and others to complete with photos, letters, and documents. That's a big piece of news yesterday. But because it wasn't WikiLeaks and Assange and liberals. It, it didn't get any attention. I'll tell you this. Snowden's real. The folks at The Guardian that released that were real. They've proven that they are 100% on target and have a lot of courage. WikiLeaks, I think the jury is now out on them, but overall they've done good work. So I make the joke that Julian Assange is basically a BS cork uh, for Hillary Clinton to hold in all the lies. And at this point, Assange is like the cork in the proverbial elephant's butt. And I'm sorry to use a gross analogy, but he needs to go ahead and pull the cork because this monkey has promised 
since June that he has got the goods on Hillary and is going to release all of her crimes. So Hillary is bloated, filled with all this information. And Assange, you said you're going to pull the cork. You are going to metaphorically burn yourself up, immolate yourself if you do not release the information. So here's the headline just to back up what I said. Daily Mail, Assange keeps Hillary hanging. Uh, here's another one out of uh, CNET News. Assange vows Google U.S. election leaks as WikiLeaks turns 10. Yeah, but he said by the end of the year, not by the election. So CNET News gets it right. WikiLeaks will publish enough evidence to indict Hillary Clinton, RT, June 13th, okay? He said it a bunch of other times. That's RT. Uh, here is Daily Caller. Assange WikiLeaks will absolutely release significant Hillary documents before election. Well, now it's by the end of the year. So the deal's been made, I think, or something's going on. I mean, he certainly changed his tune. Uh, so that was uh, last month, two months ago. Here's another one. Julian Assange, we have thousands of cables. Hillary signed with C for, God, for confidential. She told FBI she didn't know what that meant. Okay? So there it is. Assange is going to destroy himself and hurt the planet to a great extent. He doesn't expose Hillary. And if that's what he wants to do, great. Nobody's going to buy your book, okay? So I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt for now, but I am going to let everybody know I'm once bitten, I'm twice shy. I'm proud we came up here in the middle of the night. I'm proud that we, the early bird gets the worm. If you're not in the arena, you're never going to win. And we are in the arena. That's what we're doing. And I'm very, very proud of the crew and the listeners and the viewers. If Assange thinks he trolled the Internet, he thinks he trolled new media, he thinks he trolled Trump supporters as the left is celebrating today in hundreds of publications I saw this morning, making fun of yours truly and others. Think again, buddy. If you don't deliver, you just blew both your feet off with a metaphysical, metaphorical shotgun. The only way to make those feet reappear is to release the information. And I think Assange is going to see his donations go way down. I think he's going to see his support go down. No one's going to buy the stupid book, brother. And you've really acted like a clown. And maybe you did such a horrible production and such a blithering, you know, uh, presentation because you're inept. I mean, I always overestimate how smart people are over and over again in my life. And it's, it's, it's one of my biggest problems is I think people are smart like the folks I associate with and quite frankly, like I am. Uh, and I just you're not. I mean, running around acting liberal all day and you know, having a bunch of fops around you that can hardly talk and have their hair sticking out on purpose. You know, and going, I'm not really with WikiLeaks. I want to correct WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks didn't say that German investigative journalist was with WikiLeaks. They said investigative journalist. It was just all them one-upping each other like a bunch of buzzards, you know, posing on a telephone pole or something. All right, I'm done. I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to skip this network break so I have more time. Let me now, with discipline you've never seen, give you the headlines that are coming up today. On Infowars.com right now. Never before seen exclusive Obama on race. I am saddened that whites are still superior. Things could explode. President whines about white privilege in newly released 1990s footage. Yeah, I guess having everything paid for by the government and having CIA parents and having your uh, college all paid for at Harvard, being the editor of the Harvard Law Review and then basically being installed as president. Man, there's a lot of that white privilege. Sorry, I said I'd just read headlines. That's an exclusive. We'll be getting to that. It's an Infowars.com exclusive. Uh, illegals surge, the biggest they've ever seen in history, thousands a day per sector area. This is roughly double what's ever been seen. Total implosion. Border report. Illegal immigration set to break record. We're going to be getting to all of that. Uh, man says Bill Clinton is a rapist. Live on MSNBC. Will he get the $5,000? I'll play the clip and tell you later, but it's begun, and it's part of how we win. We're not going to count on WikiLeaks. We're not going to count on anybody. We're going to do it ourselves. Now is the time to rise up peacefully. The government's funding WikiLeaks probably uh, to stand down, in my view. The government's funding George Soros to fund all this kill Whitey, kill the cops, uprising stuff to create destabilization. They're the ones... Their own leak memo show from DC Leaks and WikiLeaks saying attack, uh, you know, uh, the, the situation at Trump rallies. Uh, Trump facilities are being attacked. There's so many articles every day of whites being attacked by black racist mobs. It makes my head spin. We, we, we've got a bunch of those clips today. Uh, and so we're taking matters into our own hands. People are getting aggressive. 
And this is only the beginning. Again, we cannot lose. I'm going to explain this coming up towards the end of the hour. Uh, but there is a plan to defeat these people. Continuing. Never before seen footage I mentioned is going to be coming up. Uh, the really big news that I have is dealing with the Russia situation. Let me just give you these headlines. Russia, U.S. allying with terror to overthrow Assad. U.S. forging an alliance with hardened terrorists warns Russia. U.S.-Russia ties crumble under weight of Syria nuclear pact. That's Bloomberg. Russia holds massive nuclear war exercise involving 40 million people as military tensions rise with U.S. That's the sun. This is all up on Infowars.com. Putin suspends weapons-grade plutonium deal with the United States. Associated Press. Deal with the devil. U.S. ready to ally with terror to overthrow Assad. Foreign Ministry. We're going to get to those stacks. We've got the big VP debate coming up tonight that we'll have live coverage before, during, and then your phone calls after, infowars.com forward slash show. We're also up on the big digital TV satellites covering North America and radio satellites, and we're free to air to any UHF, VHF, cable, uh, or AM, FM stations that wish to pick us up. And we've been somewhat successful getting on UHF and VHF and cable, but even more successful getting on our affiliates. I never thought they'd pick up the TV shows and special events, but they are. So uh, all the details are at InfoWars.com forward slash show, the satellite feeds, uh, and more. So that's coming up. Existential threats to world economic order, cloud IMF talks. And I have a big stack of news about the economy faltering worldwide and Deutsche Bank preparing to go completely insolvent. That's even in your precious New York Times, uh, Matt Al. So now that it's in the New York Times, it must be true. We told you six months ago, look for Deutsche Bank to go belly up like Lehman Brothers and signal the big implosion to come. They may be able to prop it up for a while, but things are unraveling. Manhattan apartment sales plunge 20% as home buyers get pickier. Oh, that's their spin. <laughs> no, everyone's being told how they can pay $400 for a 40 square foot crawl space with cockroaches under a stairwell. And everywhere in the New York Times, every day they have an article of how sexy it is to live on the street or to live in a trash can in a dumpster or to live in a crawl space. And the trendies are all like just thinking they're so tough, they're so cool, they've arrived. You know, they've got two or three degrees that are worthless, but they can live under a bridge. I mean, I saw three articles in the last two days in the New York Times, not even looking, just, oh my gosh, it's so cool to live in a shack. Oh, it's so cool, Portland's doing it now. Oh, 200 square feet, you pay the equivalent of a 2,000 square foot apartment. Oh, it's so sexy. No, you pay more for less. It's called Welcome to Dumbass Land. If you want to live at a 200 square foot, which is their new standard, then you should pay a fraction. Oh, no, no, you pay more, but it's trendy. Hawaii's newest luxury enclave has billionaires eating off trees. British pound slumps to new 31-year low as fears about the Brexit. They try to squeeze the country. And that's just some of the news there. Here's the really important news. We're going to go over all this in detail. Gun sales hit 17 years straight Month record up 27% on the previous record. That's out of the Washington Examiner. But never fear, the technocracy is here. There's no need to fear. AI license plate scanners are here. And this is out of Fox News. Feds, when you read Feds, think globalist corporate consortium collapsing the country in a corporate takeover in their own DC Leaks documents. You know, even I keep giving WikiLeaks credit when they don't deserve it. And I realized that this morning. I went, a lot of times it's DC Leaks, and then WikiLeaks puts it back out. They're getting credit for all the other major leak f groups. We can just grab all the leaks ourselves and say it's ours. And I'm not trying to go after WikiLeaks. I just, you know, you're really getting in the crosshairs now politically there. Uh, with, I mean, not releasing the Hillary info. But, uh, oh, basically announcing that you're terrorist. And saying you're criminal and you're doing something lawful and then having the police go under federal grants and license plate read everyone going to a gun show to put people in a database. But nobody wants your guns as the New York Times, the Rolling Stone magazine, the Washington Post, the L.A. Times call for national registries and gun confiscation. But no one wants your guns and, and Obamacare is free.
And you can keep your doctor, and then they laugh at you on national TV about it. Denver police running out of space for confiscated marijuana. Yeah, they haven't really legalized it. They just put you into the system now. But it's so cool. It's a George Soros plan to tax you and arrest you. It must be great. Uh, let's continue. New report warns of possible PA voting machine issues. That's out of CBS News. But don't worry. The feds and the U.N. and Homeland Security and the E.U. are federalizing it with special machines they're hooking up to make sure hackers don't get in. Meanwhile, they're the hacker right in front of you. Remember, just two months ago, I was totally insane. Obama said, what is election fraud? In fact, do we have that clip? He said, what is election fraud? And now they're all over the news breathlessly. Fox News, Republicans even. Oh, my gosh, the Russians, the Russians, the Russians, the Russians. The Russians are coming. Not the globalists are coming. Not George Soros is coming. Not the UN is coming. They've actually come and taken us over. No, no, no. The Russians are going to hack and take over in, in key states. So from Florida to Pennsylvania to Ohio to Colorado, we're going to have to have Homeland Security come in and hook up machines to things. Jay Johnson, uh, Comey, and of course Loretta Lynch, and, and they're going to fix things. I mean, we've got Loretta Lynch with basically weatherman underground rhetoric coming out of her mouth. Jay Johnson's on another fruitcake planet. She says she wants to censor, quote, right-wing speech. I mean, these people are really looking to come after us. Yes, here's Obama, remember? What was it, almost two months ago? There's a guy in Texas talking about election fraud. Trump's talking about it. And he's like, yeah, yeah. What's election? It's like, what about the Turkish ambassador was in Benghazi where the weapons shipped, as some have reported, uh, to Syria? Turkey? What's a turkey? Same thing. Election fraud? What's that? It's like, we got a Christmas tree for Christmas. A Christmas tree? What's that? We went to the ocean and fished. The ocean? What's that? Obama has flies landing all over him. Flies? What's that? I mean, just talking to you like you have an IQ of a... People with lobotomies can go, doggy. I mean, they talk to you like you're lower than someone with a lobotomy. Election fraud, what's that? The country Turkey, what's that? Here's Obama. There's no such thing, but it's all over the news now. Oh, my God, Trump's crazy. He warns of election fraud. It doesn't exist. He's insane. But, oh, my gosh, he's the biggest threat in the world. That is Crime Stop from 1984, where you can hold two opposite ideas in your head at the same time and not think they're an issue. I was thinking about this this morning. Hillary, with her husband, sold Millions of ampules of blood out of Arkansas. They knew had HIV and hepatitis in it. On record, nobody cares. Uh, she openly stole 94-plus percent of the money from the little Haitian kids. Totally criminal. It's, it's loving. It's liberal. She openly wants our guns. She openly, with Obama, has totally open borders with tuberculosis, drug-resistant, drug-immune, leprosy, black plague pouring across, total insanity. The Border Patrol is panicking. They don't even want to be there anymore because the disease is so horrible. They don't even test the poor folks coming across. At least give them help. The government's funding ISIS, the bringing in refugees, making them citizens the first day they're here by accident, unloading them off planes. No IDs are checked by accident over and over again, hundreds of times they admit. And then they're all over the news saying election fraud when they've already defrauded everybody and are going for broke. And we're sitting on top 2.5 quadrillion now, the OECD is estimating, quadrillion fake derivatives that these very people, Larry Summers and, and, and this whole crew created. We are on top, the mega time bomb. And Obama's answer is election fraud. What is that? Here it is. Of course, the elections will not be rigged. What does that mean? <laughs> the federal government doesn't run the election process. States and cities and communities all across the country, they're the ones who set up the voting systems and the no, that's voting enough. booths. And oh, but now the feds say it's not good for locals to run it because locals are actually looking at how it's going to be tabulated and not just going to give it to voter news services and the Associated Press, who since Kennedy got killed in 1964, he got killed in 63, but since the 64 election, this shadowy group announces about 9 at night who's won before polling places are even closed in California. 9 o'clock Central, they announce who wins. And then the only way... A Republican can win as if they can test it and go prove there was fraud. And that's how this new system works. So, again, none of this exists, but new report, CBS Philadelphia, warns of possible PA voting machine issues. And the feds say they believe that Russians or someone, someone is scanning the computers. But don't worry, Autobots. Optimus Prime will save you here. Let me hook up. Let me have 
IntelliTran 1 from Homeland Security. Hook into all these voting hubs at the state level and we'll, we'll scan the computers for you, Autobots, and make sure those pesky Decepticons aren't hooked in. The problem is you go, wait a minute, that's not Optimus Prime. That's Megatron. <laughs> yes. Don't worry, though. He'll fix it. <laughs> what a time to be alive. But here's the good news. No matter what they do, they will fall. We'll be back. I'm Alex Jones. This is the Info War. Coming up tonight, 7 o'clock Central, Infowars.com forward slash show on many TV stations and radio stations across the country. Live, basically commercial free. We'll have a few breaks at the end of each hour or, 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 or during uh, Fortune moments. But tonight, 7 to past 10 o'clock Central, we will have the crew in here. I am not going to be here tonight. I'm going to let the uh, crew that was not here last night uh, come in and take over and cover that. I'll probably call in at the end of the debate, though, uh, with what I think about the VP debate. This evening that will be uh, streamed, simulcasted at Infowars.com forward slash show. Now, I only got to a, a fraction of the headlines we're going to be getting to, and I have to plow back through these in more detail, obviously. And, and we have the mainstream media engaging in their own conspiracy theories. I know, actually, they're engaging in historical speculation. Just like we have this hurricane coming in towards the United States. It's already hit Haiti, and it's set to smash into Cuba. It's set to smash into the Bahamas. And it's not a conspiracy theory to say it's probably going to kill a lot of people. It's 145 miles an hour, good Lord, with the eye of the hurricane right over western Haiti right now. That country is completely de deforested, basically. 90 plus percent of their trees are gone. You look at uh, the other side of it. You look at the other side of the island of Hispaniola and the Dominican Republic is almost completely forested and beautiful. One of the best places in the Caribbean. I really feel sorry for the Haitians and the fact they've always been under tyranny. But uh, it's deforested. It has big mountains and hills. There are going to be giant mudslides. It's not a conspiracy theory to say you're going to see massive death. And every time there's a Western aid package, the money is swindled away by people like the Clintons. But that's okay, again, because they're liberal. But is that a conspiracy theory to say days ago, hey, this thing's aimed right at Haiti. If it doesn't slow down, if it doesn't dissipate, it's going to wreak havoc. I mean, look at RudgeReport.com. It's got a live satellite image of this hurricane. Matthew makes landfall in vulnerable Haiti. Just made landfall like 20, 30 minutes ago. It is smashing the entire country. In fact, the hurricane is covering the entire western side of the island of Hispaniola. That's what the island was called before it was split into Haiti and the Dominican Republic. It's a little bit of history there. Still at 145 miles per hour. We'll give you some of the details. Uh, below that, you can see it's also up on Infowars.com. We're going to create a data page on all this. The track, the track basically all has it hitting uh, the eastern side of Florida and then running up the east coast. And how will this affect the election with 34 days and ticking left? I mean, will Hillary be so arrogant that she doesn't even show up like when Louisiana flooded a month and a half ago? Will she not even show up? I think she's so arrogant in election fraud she might not. But no, because of optics, she has to at least act like she's going to win. Because of the optics, she better show up. And I'll tell you this, Trump better show up first. We need to send reporters right now. It's obvious. Who wants to go? Who wants to volunteer? We need to have reporters there via Skype. When it makes landfall, I should have thought of this days ago. You got about a day to get up there. We need to see which track most computers show uh, and then go to basically wherever that track says it's coming. But uh, I would guess that'd be South Carolina, North Carolina, but Georgia. A lot of tracks, though, have it. Let's blow up that track on screen for TV viewers and I'll narrate for radio listeners. Um, again, we got to go to the meteorology sites, the NOAA, the North American Oceanic uh, Weather Consortium. Uh, now, yeah, that's the basic track. If you go to Drudge, he's got a whole image broke down there uh, that shows all the tracks. Yeah, that's the one I want to blow up right there. If, if we can blow that up, uh, that'd be good because uh, that gives you all the different tracks. Or just Google all the potential tracks uh, of the monster hurricane. There's a monster hurricane right now. Matthew, as fast as they go is 145, sometimes 150. This is about as fast as they go. 
uh, in the Atlantic and the Caribbean. Now, they rotate the other direction and are called typhoons in the Pacific and go up to 220 miles an hour. But you've got a whole bunch of tracks, computer model tracks. It looks like most of them have it actually hitting in North Carolina into Virginia. Most have them hitting the coast of Virginia. Some, though, looks like just about just as many have it slamming into the edge of Florida or going right through Florida. Still a bunch show it going through uh, the uh, Oceanic area and then not hitting until it, it grazes off of Virginia and North Carolina. Uh, where would you send a reporter? Let's go check with meteorologists and find out where they think it's going to make landfall. But that is obviously a big deal. In the middle of this crazy election, uh, we've got that situation going on, and I've got stacks of other uh, insane news here. But speaking of conspiracy theories, if I sit here, and I'm a meteorologist, or I'm just a layperson that watches the Weather Channel or whatever, and I'm going, wow, 145 miles an hour, it's going to run over in the next hour or so and, and be through uh, with uh, Haiti. It'll, it'll still be over Haiti for the next day, but, but leaving. And then it's going to run on over the Bahamas, which it won't slow down much over those. That's not much land. The water's hot right now. And then it's going to go barreling into Florida and the East Coast. That's not speculation. That's not conspiracy theory. I'm allowed to have critical thinking. I'm allowed to tie my shoelaces. But they want me to go to them, and it's a conspiracy theory. Well, <laughs> I've said that it looks like SpaceX is being sabotaged. Maybe inside job to get insurance money. I don't know. I don't know. But I've been saying for a couple of years... An inordinate amount of SpaceX rockets that have pretty good companies involved and good people. Uh, and I'm not de defending the folks that are all involved in it. I'm just saying I'm, I'm all for private space exploration. And it continues to blow up. And I have said, could it be uh, sabotage? And they had an article a few months ago when I said this with another explosion. And they said, oh, Jones is being crazy. And, you know, you have the spaceship that went up that was going to be their reentry device. And that it, it had problems and crashed. So a few years ago, I mean, what is it, like half their launches are blowing up? That's a lot worse than uh, you know NASA's uh, record even back in the 60s. So I said, could it be sabotage? There's a big history of industrial sabotage, we, espionage, you name it. But now we have sabotage speculation gathers around SpaceX. That's out of CNBC News. So it's okay that they're speculating. Just like the feds are saying, I think the Russians may take over the elections. When I say I'm worried about the feds taking over, because they're the ones that have the history of stealing elections for the globalists, oh, I'm a kook, I'm crazy, it doesn't exist. But when the Russians just show some cockamamie idea, oh, then it's very, very plausible. Uh, so now we have uh, sabotage in SpaceX. What do you think? I'm going to open the phones up on WikiLeaks last night, the phones up on uh, Hurricane Matthew. What could Hillary's October surprises be? You know, we've got our October surprises. They've got their October surprises. What do you think of all this uh, serious Russian news? I've got a bunch of clips I want to play as well. That's just a fraction of what we're going to be covering. But before I go any further, let me just give you the number. It's 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. I'm Alex Jones, your host. 34 days left. I am so excited. Wild horses couldn't drag me away. I was excited to be uh, on air for four hours last night or close to four hours uh, with a special transmission to cover the WikiLeaks uh, tease, the WikiLeaks troll event. I still hope he redeems himself, but it's, it's not looking good. I'll just say that. Um, it, it, he didn't apologize. I'm sorry I'm not releasing it. He kind of got off on it. It was like an Access TV meets Wayne's World, but whatever. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I want to believe that Assange is not the cork holding, you know, holding in all the dirt on Hillary that we have a right to see. 800-259-9231. I want to get into Russia and these clips here in a moment. But first, <clears throat> DNA Force, we only discount a few times a year. It's got the truly bioavailable, organic-based form, that means it's not synthetic, of BioPQQ. Now, normally a bottle of BioPQQ with the same amount of this truly absorbable type with the same dose would be 50 plus dollars, okay? Uh, we have 175 clinical studies, nerve growth factor energizes pumps the toxins out of the cells, the mitochondria. This is our Rolls-Royce product. Uh, similar formulas in medical clinics in Europe are $300 to $600. This is normally $140. It's $23 off right now because just 
the bio PQQ in it, depending on how much it costs when we get it, is 40 to $60 a bottle. I'm saying just the bio PQQ that we put in it has that value. You understand that when you see a price tag on that, most um, high quality nutraceuticals have a three to four to five times markup. Most regular supplements have a seven times markup. That means they're putting $3 a product in the bottle, selling it for $25. No, 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 no. When we sell something, the markup is 100%. And then we have to run the advertising, the crew, the whole operation off that, legal, compliance, testing, you name it. No one else does that. We do it. That's why we're taking over the industry. I mean, we're growing exponentially, thank God. I mean, we're still not huge, but if you look at our growth curve in five years, it's big uh, because we're very competitive and we give you the highest quality, highest standards, 23% off DNA Force for a limited time, uh, the most organic, high-quality form of CoQ10. And it just goes on and on what's in it. But the bio PQQ in each bottle costs more than all the other ingredients combined. But we're talking major game changer. Uh, this is the ultimate antioxidant. It has the equivalent factor that vitamin C has of 40 cartons of blueberries. 40 little cartons of blueberries. Uh, in each dose. I mean, this is joke level, what BioPQQ does. The synthetic fake BioPQQ, we can get for about 10% of what we get this. That's what everybody else gets. But the word is it doesn't absorb. By the way, no one really knows what BioPQQ is. Uh, it, it, they get it out of comets and, and asteroids. Uh, they mine it out of the Arctic and Antarctic uh, is one of the ways. The Japanese patented a way to have bacteria produce it, and that's how we have it. So when I say organic, uh, it is organic, but it is not technically organic uh, because it is manipulated. And we'll just tell you point blank, this is a nutraceutical by the very definition, okay? This is the stuff that stars, you know, stardust. This is, this, is, this, is, this is galactic life. This is whatever it is, it's the stuff that magic's made of. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I don't know how to describe it. The Japanese are obsessed with it. Go read what BioPQQ does when they feed it to worms, how much longer they live. Just, just go look at all the thousands of studies. This stuff is dynamite. And every time I look at it and I realize that I have this product, I've got all these products, I've got to remember to take it every day. I've gotten almost religious about taking it, but, it, but now it's like 10 pills a day, and I was never a pill guy before. But let me tell you, it's changed my life. I look like living hell, as everybody knows. I've lost over 70 pounds. I look a lot better. We can put it on screen for folks what I looked like five years ago versus now. We have that footage. and. It's dramatic. There I am four years ago at Bilderberg in England. We've got footage of me five years ago. There I am a couple months ago. And it is dramatic. And then we've got shots of my shirt off. Okay, there I am again four years ago. We've got shots of me five years ago as well. That's at 100 and, I mean, that's 280 pounds. That is at 230 pounds. And you say, well, what do you mean you lost 70 pounds of fat, but then you're, you're still only 230? You didn't, well, because I gained a bunch of muscle. And that is taking X2, real vitality. Uh, that is taking... Uh, of course, uh, the DNA force available at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. And by the way, I'm not sticking my chest out there, okay? I'm not even pulling my stomach in. Can we go to Twitter and show folks? In fact, there's a, even a better photo from the side of me on a horse. I don't claim to look like a beach boy, but at 42, I'm built like a gorilla. Uh, I have lost a ton of weight. Like, go to my Twitter and show folks me on horseback uh, this weekend uh, with the family. Went out and did some, did some hunting and stuff. I mean, I have lost a ton of weight is what I'm telling you. I mean, I have lost a ton of weight. And there's another shot. Um, I t texted it this weekend to Buckley. He's got it where it's a side shot. You can see just barely with my torso. I got a big torso. My torso in tight jeans, barely like a half quarter inch roll of fat. And if I take my pants off and stand up, there's nothing there. You can see the six pack on the side now. And if I ever just focus on working out, the problem is taking super male vitality and X2 and all this, I've gotten lazy. I'm going to be honest, I tried to lose the weight, would swim up to two miles, two or three times a week, usually a mile almost every day. Folks at Barton Springs could attest to that, a mile almost every morning. Even in the fall, it was freezing outside. I was out there until it got too cold. And I was jogging and I was lifting like six, seven days a week. It was insane. And I couldn't lose more than 20, 30 pounds. I finally took all the supplements and I'm lazy now. I work out like two, three times a week. I, I take the kids for a hike. I, mean, it just, I, I need to get in there, hit it like I did before, and people are going to freak out. We'll sell even more of the product, and then I can get more reporters and more crew and defeat the New World Order. Uh, but I'm telling you, just take the supplements religiously.
And I'm telling myself that because I'll go a week of doing it every day, and then it's just it's and then great things happen. And then I'll forget, and like three days goes by, and I haven't even taken X two. So that's it. Every day with lunch because I keep forgetting in the morning and at night. Every day I want the full regiment. It's it's you guys, please. It's your job. You've got to nanny me. Just like I tell you, make me play the clips. Make me get to the news. Uh, they've got to act as producers in there because I'm like a bull in a china cabinet, and I'm already ranting here. Twenty three percent off on that. We have the free Infowars live app. It's going to have even more upgrades in the next month added to it. Free at InfoWars.com forward slash app on the Droid and on other platforms uh, like Apple. Absolutely free. And tell folks about the app. I'm very excited. 200,000 people have now uh, downloaded the free app in the last two weeks. Quite frankly, that's a fraction of the millions and millions that tune in. Please tell your neighbors, your friends, your office about the app. That's how you get them dialed into the truth. That's how you wake them up. We also have the InfoWars Solar Base Station Power Supply, now 33% off retail at InfoWarsStore.com. And this is just an amazing control unit and the most high-tech, latest, long-lasting uh, system with phosphate battery, lithium-ion. The last up to eight times longer than your typical unit, which usually costs more. The unit provides 1,500 watts of continuous power and 3,000 watts of peak power for any emergency. That special is going to end in about a week. Check it out at InfoWarsStore.com, the InfoWars Solar Base Station. You cannot get uh, a better unit or better deal on that. And the only reason it's one of the one of the products we don't have five stars because we don't sell a lot of these. And we went and looked at the bad reviews we have on the third party site. They are fake people who admit they didn't buy it. And it admits right there, didn't buy it. But the trolls go, oh, look, this only has 30 reviews. We can go game this and try to hurt Alex Jones. It doesn't matter. People that know solar know this is a really good unit at a very uh, competitive price. And they want to support the broadcast. So go to hell. You know, it's not working. But we ought to do a report on that, the showing how on the third-party site, they admit on there that these people did not buy it. They admit they didn't buy it, but they're saying it's crap to try to give us you know, only three stars. But you can't do that with Super Mail with thousands and thousands of reviews, 4.7. Can't do that with the other ones with thousands of reviews. You hate it. You hate it. You hate it. You want to shut down free speech. You can't stand it. By the way, if you're listening to us on Amber FM Station, I want you to spread the word about that station. It's, we're in a war, folks. I want you to support them. I want you to become a sponsor, support their sponsors, let them know why you're supporting them. Send them a $100 bill if you can afford it, a $20 bill if you can't. Put their bumper sticker on your car. Spread the word. Volunteer to be an intern. This is a war. Everything you do, every person you reach out to is a game changer. I'm going to come back and go to Matt, Adam, Donald, Uncle Sam, Chris, and others. And then I'm getting to all these clips. Huge. Clinton panics as journalists capture video of Hillary's EMS stretcher. Millie Weaver did it again. It became national news. We didn't get credit. I don't care. Uh, but the point is, she got it again. With them panicking when they see the emergency medical equipment behind Hillary that the Secret Service warned us of. She's caught this twice with her intrepid cameraman. We also have the even bigger news. Uh, we have Obama uh, in the 90s talking bad about white people. Exclusive. Infowars.com. And we've got even bigger news uh, with another man or maybe he didn't perform very well in some of his business endeavors but i think one of the kind of the things that we really need to be looking at in this debate is that bill clinton is a rapist infowars.com infowars.com bill clinton's a rapist bill okay. clinton is a rapist all right bill clinton, rapist. so the, the, he he knew that he had a, a minute that's how he wanted to use his time we hear some clapping going around over here um i would point out now, I'm going to go to your phone calls as soon as we kick off the next hour and get to all these clips I mentioned. But I wanted to start with that clip in this segment because that was MSNBC yesterday when they were talking to people at a Trump rally, and that went nationwide. Now, we're having a contest, $1,000 if you get the Bill Clinton rape shirt on TV for five seconds or more. If you get the shirt on TV with the statement that he needs to be investigated for his sex crimes and that infidelity is a distraction, or that you believe he's a rapist, if that's what you believe, then it's $5,000. Um, the gentleman that just did that, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the judge, and I can do this in this bounty, uh, and then folks can decide where they want to participate, but I think it's quite fair. He didn't get both of it done, but it's more than just having the shirt, but it's less than having the shirt and saying Bill Clinton's a rapist. So this gentleman, if he can contact us and send a photo of himself, I also want to get him on as a guest, uh, gets two thousand dollars, so we now have seven thousand dollars of the hundred thousand dollar bounty of truth, bounty for truth, bounty to expose Bill Clinton uh, is now out there. Now, I want to play the clip from Fox News, obviously this Saturday. But if a cascade of this happens, and 
our budget's basically 20 events like this. If a cascade happens, this will force the issue out there. And Bill Clinton has settled sexual assault cases. The man is a monster. They stole the money from Haitian kids. I mean, they must be exposed. Hillary is a master criminal who openly sold government positions and sold out America. When she accuses Trump of that with no evidence, it is literally the most hypocritical thing I've ever seen in my life. But uh, here is the Fox clip uh, that is now being echoed around the world. Here it is. Welcome back, everyone. I've been waiting for this segment all morning long. We are rolling out the red carpet, not for Tucker, but for some adorable, <laughs> adoptable dogs. Every year, the Best Friends Animal Society helps cats and dogs who are stuck in animal shelters find dogs. We still have not heard from the young man or know who he is. We're checking the emails, stop rape at infowars.com, or you can simply upload a video of yourself on YouTube, you know, uh, obviously saying, you know, here's my name, here, this is who I am, or here's how you contact me. We want to pay you. I've had $100,000 contests before where we're one person, 100000 So we've had bigger contests than this. We're doing it. I want to pay you. I want you to come on the show, get in contact with us. Coming up, Trump calls out Clinton for selling government favors. It's the only experience he's ever had, he says. Uh, we're also going to get to Russian foreign minister. U.S. are sparing al-Nusra, that's al-Qaeda in Syria, for plan B to change regime in Syria. And the huge Russian news, that is all coming up. More on WikiLeaks chumping the public uh, yesterday and more. I'm Alex Jones. We're only 34 days, really less, 33 and a half days out from the 2016 election. This is InfoWars. Don't take the media for granted. A multinational consortium has just taken over the web, and censorship is intensifying. Stay with us. All right, I'm going to take a ton of phone calls in this hour. The Dr. Steve Pachenik, who has been on the show for 14 and a half years, people used to like him, but some people hated him and couldn't stand him because he makes a lot of big claims, makes a lot of huge statements, but he really is who he says he is. And, but a lot of his craft is being confident, but not in a con artist way but actually believing the potential of individuals and groups working together for liberty and to free the oppressed and to stand up against tyranny. Uh, he, five, six years ago, started hammering, you're going to see de-evolution from the federal government, you're going to see the EU fall apart, you're going to see nationalism rise again and nationalist leaders, and your listeners will be a great part of that. I'm not, I'm not making fun of him, that's how he talks. And you now see it happening. He's really a smart guy. He did co-write the books with Tom Clancy. He was one of Tom Clancy's major sources. You know, he, he basically coined the term net wars and net force and cyber security to a great extent. And he ran the Camp David Accords and he's overthrown major countries. And, you know, he's basically under indictment, you know, and things in Italy for <laughs> all sorts of, you know, the death of prime ministers, you name it. I mean, there, there's all sorts of stuff. But the point is, is that uh, he's a heavy hitter and he's going to be joining us he didn't, uh, to, to, to break this down. And I mean, I've had like the Russian, uh, the only Russian government contact I've had was a couple times in New York, super hot blondes would come up to me at an event and ask me if I like Vladimir Putin. And then it would be like, come to dinner, you know, and there'd be like some handler going, you like Putin? You like Russia? And I'd be like, what the hell? I'm like, no, I'm not going to dinner with you. Uh, so I had that. And that's basically Russia's main way of infiltrating U.S. media. I mean, that does go on, let's be honest. The globals do it to them 10 times what the Russians do. Uh, and then the other thing was they claimed I was going on RT. I've been on there like a hundred times or more. And then I wasn't on RT. It cuts on Skype and it's a bunch of people in a government room interrogating me about Steve Pachinik. How do you know Pachinik? How do you know Pachinik? Why does he talk to you? Mm -hmm. They're all looking at me and I'm like, I wasn't guilty of anything against Russia or anything. They were really looking at me like I was this horrible person. And then right after that, I was banned off RT and I was told that the U.S. government had threatened them. And said, so we're going to pull your license. Uh, I mean, I was told by the basically the head of RTUS that. Um, and I was told a bunch of other stuff. And I mean, I've been on Japanese TV probably 50 times. I've been on British TV probably 100 times. I've been on Brazilian TV five or six times. Mexican TV dozens of times. I mean, used to, I did the interviews. They would come through, so I was a news source. I've been on Turkish TV 30 times or something. I've been on Israeli TV a bunch. I've been on Iranian TV over 100 times. Then the Iranians invited me to go meet with Ahmed Dinaji, and I said, you know what, I'm going to stop right there. And then I got contacted by people saying, very interesting, the Iranians talk to you. 
would you ever want to go to Iran? And I was like, no, I don't trust this government to go to Iran to spy on the Iranians for you. Thank you very much. Well, I wasn't saying that. I was just seeing. You know, that's the kind of world I live in. So whatever makes spies show up is, is I stop doing it. See, spies show up, I, I quit doing it. I just, you know, when I, I don't need to go on. Oh, my God, the Iranians called me for like three, four years after every day going, Mr. Jones, please come on program. I'm talking national Iranian TV, press TV, international, actually. And, and of course, of course, I go on there and promote freedom. I mean, I don't go on there and like speak. I'm like, America needs a Second Amendment. Worldwide, we need free market. You need to free your people and blah, blah, blah. And Russia needs to open up more freedom as well. And I mean, I would say all that uh, as an ambassador, I guess, for the real voice of America. But when I come back. I'm going directly to Matt on Libya. Adam uh, says that WikiLeaks Julian Assange is just building it up. Well, I got some comments on that. Uh, Uncle Sam wants to talk about WikiLeaks. Uh, Chris wants to talk about America voting for Trump. Haiti Hurricane Matthew hit, just hit uh, in the last couple hours. It's right over uh, Haiti right now, covering the island with torrential rains. And here's the big problem, 145 mile an hour winds. That's about as fast as a hurricane goes. Uh, again, uh, typhoons go up to 220. So we're going to be breaking it all down, and it's set in the next few days to swim into Florida and the U.S. East Coast. Talk about an October surprise. Donald, Uncle Sam, Chris, Matt, and many others. Your phone calls are coming up here in just a moment. I've, I've canvassed a lot of really smart folks around the office like David Knight, and I said, what do you think is happening with WikiLeaks? Him saying in June, I'm going to release it by next week. That'll you know destroy her. It'll get her indicted. Uh, it'll be devastating. These are quotes. And then it turns into next week, next week, next week. Here's my new book. Um, you know, he tells everybody the big press conference is going to be Wednesday. Oh, now it's going to be Tuesday. It looks like an Access TV production. In two hours, basically nothing gets said. It was like slitting your wrist or something. And I've looked around. Maybe he tweeted it. Let's double check. But he said, I'm not going to release this stuff at 3 a.m. That's the best time to actually release stuff. Because then the media is all actually up then. That's the big news day. That's the smartest time to release something. Would be on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, a Monday, Tuesday, or a Wednesday at 3 a.m. That is the best time to release something. Everybody knows that. You know, you'll finish the story at 10 at night. You have it published at, say, 4 a.m. 4 a.m. might be the best, say, Eastern. And then he said, I will release in 10 data dumps everything by the end of the year. Now, others are saying, like the Daily Mail, that he promises to release the election stuff before November 8th. So maybe that's true. I can't find it. Um, he says he'll, they say he will publish a huge tranche or piece of one million leaked documents before the U.S. presidential election. And I guess maybe that leaks or that links to it right there. But he denied he is trying to torpedo Hillary Clinton's campaign. So it sounds like he's backing off Going after Hillary, who he called a demon and the rest of it. Has he made a deal? I think there needs to be pressure put on WikiLeaks to do the right thing for the public. Uh, so Assange vows Google U.S. election leaks as WikiLeaks turns 10. But I've got him back in June. WikiLeaks will publish enough evidence to indict Hillary Clinton, warns Assange. Okay, release it. If she needs to be indicted, man, release it. Come on. We're 34 days out here. She's planning to steal the election. They're federalizing it. With the UN, for heaven's sakes. You keep saying you're going to release it, and then you sit there and advertise your book. You have the promotional understanding of a child, okay? And I don't mean that arrogantly, but I know what I'm talking about. You're an amateur when it comes to stuff like this. You've got courage. I've said you're a hero. Blah, blah, blah. We've been supporting you for 10 years, man. My country's in the crosshairs here. This woman stole the Haitian kid's money, 94 plus percent of it. They ship painted blood out to hemophiliacs worldwide. They knew it had HIV in it. I, I, th this morning I was writing notes. I couldn't even go to bed when I was sitting there eating an early breakfast at 6 a.m. I just said, I'll just stay up, take care of the family. And I was thinking of all her crimes. I'm going to shoot an expose, just like a five-minute video that just mentions each crime. And says, is this really what you're for? And this upside-down world that trumps evil. I'm going to Adam first, then I'm going to Matt, Chris, Uncle Sam, Donald, and others. we got this big hurricane that just slammed into Haiti, 145 miles an hour. Speaking of Haiti, pray for those folks. They've cut down almost every tree in the country. It's a giant mud pile of mountains. The death is going to be huge. Uh, they call that a conspiracy theory when I have my own common sense and historical understanding, but it's true. I said I thought SpaceX was being sabotaged. That's now CBS News, you name it. 
So we'll be breaking it all down. But what are Hillary's October surprises? Uh, I know what some of ours are, and you're going to be hearing about that by next week, and I'm just going to stop right there. But we've got clips of Trump I want to get to. He says Hillary is focusing on petty things, while all she's ever done is basically loot uh, and sell out government jobs and positions and sovereignty. Yeah, that's what these globalists do. They sell out America, the formerly richest country in the world, and parlay it into global government power where they sit over the world. We have new footage of her gurney and medical emergency equipment, and the, and the people panic when it's seen. That's up on Infowars.com. Uh, we have a, a new video that's up on DrudgeReport.com. Man says Bill Clinton is a rapist live on MSNBC. So now it's Fox. Now it's MSNBC. We just got to keep hitting all these stations, folks. Great job. Now, that guy didn't follow the rules, but I'm awarding him $2,000. Uh, stop rape at Infowars.com. Just do it legally and lawfully, and you did. He walks over to you with the camera and the mic, and you hit him and hit him hard, so we salute you. So that's coming up, and, and it's more. Uh, we've got never-before-seen video, exclusive to Infowars.com, Obama on race. I am saddened that whites are still superior. This is a family-edited documentary. It's actually pretty good uh, by the family. Uh, and it's, it's just talk about an arrogant, pseudo-intellectual, know-it-all, you know, just total change agent. They're manipulating everybody. Uh, it is just standard crap. Uh, so this is a pretty big deal. Uh, new footage uh, of Obama, you know, running around spewing his political correctness. I got a bunch of political correctness news here. Oh my gosh, it's 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 unbelievable. Uh, colleges are releasing a whole list of things you can't say and you can't do. It's even more incredible. You can't compliment a minority and say that's really neat or that's really cool. Like, wow, you're a great musician. What a great guitar player. I just love your voice. You know, I just love Jimi Hendrix's guitar. Oh, I'm 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 being patronizing to a black person. No, I'm not. He's played an amazing guitarist and amazing singer. In my view, I mean, am I tell it to kiss his ass? No, I mean, what this creates is actual segregation, and that's the new announcement they're announcing all over the country: segregation, no whites allowed. So whites are the new people that can't go to the water fountain, uh, this area, you know, the dormitories, literally. So uh, this is the total race division of the country in the name of liberalism. This is pure evil. So that's all coming up. But let's play a WikiLeaks clip from last night with the horrible hammered audio that WikiLeaks was putting out. I mean, I'm sorry. It's just this was a a, a, a high school, you know, uh, RTF class, media class. I mean, this, this isn't as good as a crappy college, you know, first first shot here. I mean, this is a bunch of half-ass people always like, oh, 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 I'm a liberal, oh, no, you know, sticking their chins out, putting their hands. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, I see it too much. I've been around it, man. The guy's got his hair sticking up on purpose and, you know, let me correct the record on with Lucky Licks. No one said that. You know, just always correcting everyone, always in charge, always the boss. They've set up a monopoly on leaks. So everyone sends their leaks to them so they can not release the stuff, I guess, that, that they don't want to release. What, what a club. Release it. It was DC Leaks released all the new Soros crap and all the other things, but nobody picked it up, so it went to WikiLeaks, and then the poor guy that sent his stuff to WikiLeaks got shot in the back. Okay, I'm starting to get off the chain here. Let's just stop right there. The Snowden stuff all got doled out, didn't it? This is all getting doled out, I guess. Maybe maybe they're right. Time will tell, but I'm angry. Because he did chump everybody. He did say, oh, the big thing's coming out, the big thing's coming out. He did do that. Big press conference, oh, it's still on, oh, 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 don't do it like that. It's called crying wolf. You know, I've seen mountain cats and stuff hiking and, and wolves, even in East Texas. And, you know, I never until now really even told anybody about it. Because you just see a mountain lion 20 feet away running through the woods. You just don't even tell anybody when you get back to the ranch house because it sounds crazy, you know. You, need, you, need, you have to shoot it. I don't want to shoot it. I had my AK-47 right there. I could, could have probably got it. But by the time I focused, it was going to the woods. I didn't want to kill it. I... I took the safety off, swung the rifle around, saw the tail end of the cat. It could have gone boom, 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 you know, semi-auto, but I didn't do it. But long story short, saw a red wolf, definitely a red wolf, not a hybrid. Uh, could have killed it. Had it in the crosshairs about two seconds. I was in a tree stand hunting hogs. Went ahead and shot two hogs that morning. This was years ago, but I was like 20 years old. But the point is, is that, you know, sometimes you just got to get a photo of it for people to believe it. Uh, so we've got a lot to cover here, ladies and gentlemen. It's all coming up. The hurricane, the exclusive uh, with Obama. 
on I'm saddened that whites are still, quote, superior, all this bizarre garbage. But right now, let's go to Adam on WikiLeaks from Florida. You're on the air. Alex, how are you doing today? Good, my friend. Go ahead. Well, this is what I hope. And I'm not really the most educated when it comes to Julian Assange. But from what I understand, he's been in the embassy for four years. He's from what I read the medical report. He's, you know, he's going through a lot of stress. I believe you know what I'll hand it to you. Life. It can make you go cabin fever, stir crazy to be in there four years. I think he's a hero. I just think he's trolling people. He shouldn't have pitched his book at the end if he wasn't going to deliver the gravy. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, I, I want gravy. I want gravy. I want to see oh. Hillary defeated. Yeah. 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 I hear that. And um, I think what he did was basically, I mean, this is, this is just what I hope him being a little selfish in that he's risking his life. He's been in prison. He doesn't know what his future is. He's trying to get as much of that limelight and as much attention as he can for his cause and what he feels is so important that he's done. And, you know, he's going to do whatever he can to, you know, get you to look at him. And then he, he, he needs to, like he said, on a weekly basis from now on, be in the spotlight. And he needs to release the indictable material now. We need it now. We're only 34 days out. So much is going on. He needs to release it now or, or right after the hurricane hits. He just, you know, four or five days after that disaster, that's going to be a whole new diversion. You think Hillary will show up to the hurricane disaster? I don't know, but I'll tell you what, for this debate between Pence and, and Kane, I'm looking for the same tricks as before. I think Pence is reviewing the questions right now, just like Hillary rev reviewed them before. And he's going to, you're going to notice Pence, is going to be not as uh, he's not going to be um uh kane is going to seem just more fluent and more um you know he's going to seem more with it because he's not Pence why are you saying why are you saying that uh why are you saying he's gonna be more fluent because he's had a chance to review all review all the questions just like hillary did and so it's going to make pence seem like he's not with it when Kane has had a chance to review all the questions, and he has an advantage. Just well, like I know this. Did. I know this. We've got this whole Brit Hume piece I'll play later where he's making fun of me last night and others saying that we're saying these debates are rigged. They admittedly turned his mic off the entire time to the audience where they couldn't even hear him past the fifth row. You know, 90% of the crowd couldn't even hear him. So that's why there was, like, people going, huh, huh, and, you know, and, and not as much applause. There was 40-plus times Lester Holt interrupted him. Every time that there was an applause for Trump, Holt would interrupt that. He only interrupted Hillary six times. If that ain't rigged, I don't know what is, brother. What do you think? I think it's rigged, and I definitely think they're, this is all they have is these tricks to pull. And one thing I wanted to mention before I go, I noticed this election season, I've never really paid attention so much, but a recurring, a recurring theme seems to be you must blame your opponent for what you're doing. And I think the reason is, What's being done is being done, and the people know it, but they don't know who to blame. If you can focus the blame onto your opponent... Absolutely. Let me explain that. There's a lot of info floating around, and we've, we've proven government-funded and foundation-funded sites that put out plausible-sounding conspiracy theories on purpose to confuse people that are very close to news. In fact, about five years ago, while Homeland Security was trying to ram through a bill to set up FEMA caps, uh, FEMA camps across the United States, the emergency centers... Establishment Act, the Onion came out with something that looked like C-SPAN with great acting, saying the exact thing that was really going on, but making a joke out of it. And that's a tactic that the Inquirer has been caught doing before, inoculating the public before some big scary thing uh, actually comes out. And absolutely, they know the public is aware of what's going on. That's why Hillary accuses Trump of being a foreign agent when she's a foreign agent. That's why she accuses him of selling out U.S. interest when that's what she's doing. And speaking of that, I appreciate your call, Adam. Let's play a clip of Donald Trump. Uh, the video's up on Infowars.com along with an article. Trump calls out Clinton for selling government favors. Now, everybody has to get this article and video that Steve Watson posted and send it to your liberal friends and say, man, come on, wake up to what Hillary's really doing and also send them articles that are mainstream where Hillary kept 94 plus percent of all the money she claimed was going to Haitian refugees, and 97% of the money she, quote, gave to charity, she gave to herself. 
You can send those articles to them and say, man, this is selfish, this is evil, this is wrong. But just like the Canadian and UK studies show, modern liberals that call themselves liberals are six times more likely not to give to charity or to commit crime. They'll tell you all day to donate, all day to give, all day to give a big tip, all day to help homeless people, all day to help, you know, immigrants, all day to help kids in, you know, Brazilian hospitals. But they don't donate hospital beds. They don't donate money. They don't go down to South America and fix kids' teeth for free like my dad does and never even brags about it. And, I mean, my dad's been at been places when there's, like, shootings and, and hand grenades going off. I mean, my dad's almost been killed in South America uh, down there. I'm, I'm talking, you know, doing the dental work of 300, 400 kids when he's down there for a week, okay, until the point he got sick doing it. My mom told him, you're old now, no more going to South America. He doesn't do that because he wants to feel good from white guilt. He does it because it feels good to help starving kids, okay? And any human, black, white, old, young, has that love of children. That's a human trait. They have actual studies that Google's pushing saying racism can only come from white people. Let me tell you, humans all basically act the same. And the media has directed, quote, minorities that it's okay to act like racist monsters. I mean, this is, this is obvious. Now, let's go ahead and play this clip right now of Trump. Anyway, her only method of making money is by selling government favors and granting access to special interests. Know nothing about how businesses succeed and grow. Hillary Clinton has never created a single job in her entire life. That's right, she only steals jobs. The devil is never a maker. The less that you give, he's a taker. Uh, let's go ahead now and go to who is up next here. Who should we go to next? I'm going to move quick now. Matt in Ohio, you're on the air. Thanks, Alex. Um, I think the WikiLeaks thing is largely a distraction. Uh, I think the, the data needed to uh, sink Hillary's campaign is already out there. Uh, Lib the Libyan war is her biggest Achilles heel. Um, I'd like to recommend a guest. Uh, if you've ever heard of Jim and Joanne Moriarty, um, they had uh, intel out of Libya that was confirmed by General Mike Flynn himself when he was uh, head of the DIA. And they've got, uh, you know, I mean, pictures of mass graves. They were witnesses to the invasion of Tripoli uh, when NATO brought in uh, al-Qaeda forces on uh, transports into the ports. And, um, I mean, they've got really powerful evidence. And I think, you know, given the demographics of the Bernie voters, uh, Trump wins by painting Hillary as a mass murderer, you know, regardless. Absolutely. That's why we put the article out yesterday, and we'll put that, you know, article uh, back up on screen for TV viewers, uh, where we have the former head of the Congressional Black Caucus and others that met with Gaddafi. He was trying to give up, but they didn't want that. They wanted a failed state, and Hillary wanted a vendetta. And you're absolutely right about the folks that you just mentioned that were international business folks that also witnessed this, and General Flynn has confirmed everything they said. And so they are one of our sources. We are planning next week to try to get a lot of these people on the show, the former congressman, uh, those folks and others, but you're absolutely right. This is simply incredible. Hillary killed Libya peace deal over personal vendetta, claims whistleblower. Gaddafi agreed to hold free elections, but Clinton uh, ref uh, refusal led to ISIS takeover, thousands of deaths, international migrant crisis. And that story needs to go mega viral. It's got all the documents, you name it. The Clintons later bragged that Libya wasn't a failure. They wanted a failed state to give Islamic State a jumping off point, which they have now have in Syria. And that's why this is so important. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I really think this is an Achilles heel because it shows, you know, Clinton waged war on the Libyan people. Um, you know, they, they really didn't just overthrow the military. They uh, they. they they really destroyed. It was a destabilization, uh, civilization ending program for Africa. Exactly. And not only that, Alex, Hillary Clinton herself, as Secretary of State, recognized the NTC government. That government declared Sharia law as the only law in Libya. And so Hillary Clinton ratified the enslavement of a, of a free population of women to Sharia law when she did that. Um, you know, and, and so 
I wonder what women voters in the United States are going to think when they see that formerly, you know, women who can go to college, who could own businesses, engage in contracts. We're all, you know, all that was shut down by the NTC. And by the way, we bring this up and they have Gloria Steinem and others get on TV and say, how dare you bring up Islam? You're Islamophobic. This is what Orthodox Islam under Wahhabism and Al-Qaeda and ISIS and Al-Nusra is. It's what our own military has, has exposed is going on and begged Congress to stop Obama and Hillary. And exactly, she's so evil, basically married to Uma Abedin, you know, staying with her in the same hotel room. And then Uma Abedin's mother is the main journal controller that glorifies sexual mutilation of all Islamic women. And the liberal publications make a joke about it when I talk about it and say, Alex is obsessed with women's genitals. Get out of Uma's underwear drawer. They actually had joke articles about it. It's not funny. These people aren't liberals. They are insane mental patients. Yeah, exactly. And when Hillary recognized the NTC legally, internationally, that was a big step to allow, you know, Libya's, you know, whatever, tens of billions of dollars to go to that government and, you know, just to be used to support the uh, radicals and send them over to Syria. So she not only ratified, you know, Sharia law in Libya, she also, uh, you know, uh, allowed uh, international funds to be sent to that NTC government that was partnered with the terrorists. I mean, I really think this is, I mean, I don't know how she can defend against this, Alex. If that information is managed well, I, I, I personally think it sinks her campaign. Uh, Roger Stone believes so. I believe so. We're going to put together a special informational video in the next week. It's funny you said that about Hillary supporting the persecution of women. It's just you have to get to the trendy liberal women who watch The Daily Show and live in a bubble and only go to the Huffington Post and the New York Times. And I feel sorry for these women. I mean, you talk to these modern women, and the, the modern men are even dumber. But, I mean, they don't know what planet they're on, brother. You sound like you're an informed guy. Are you a veteran? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm just a lawyer. Uh, but I, I've been listening to you, Alex, for about 10 to 12 years. You woke me up. And, you know, just uh, having a background in doing research, informational research, um, I've kind of become a news hound. Um, well, I want to and, say you know, something. Just, Don't count on us, because here's the deal. We put out videos that we put a week into, and it gets a half million views. Uh, sometimes we put a video out that we put an hour into, it gets five million. We never know what hits big. Everybody should make their own YouTube videos, where you just sit there with a computer screen showing the articles. you got a great voice. You're a smart guy. Uh, some more convincing than I do. Sh sh you know, put a plea out to women to wake up. We need all of you listening to do your own YouTubes, your own podcast, to call into what you're doing, you know, shows like you're doing. You're the leader, Matt. Oh, you are the answer. You're the solution. More calls and a ton of news breaking. Straight ahead, I'm Alex Jones. Uh, we have so much to cover here with Johnny, Chris, Uncle Sam, Glenn, Donald, and others. Um, I've got a lot to cover. I mean, quite frankly, normally a whole radio show would be dedicated to, my gosh, we've got the biggest stories in sliced bread. We've got video from the 1990s of Obama running around race baiting in Kenya. And we do. We haven't gotten to it yet. It's on Infowars.com. Uh, we've got, already mentioned it, but it's big. Man says Bill Clinton's a rapist live on MSNBC. The chain reaction has begun. I want to salute you. We've got the hurricane. Uh, Matthew makes landfall about two hours ago, slamming into Haiti, where the Clintons have already robbed everybody of 94% of the charity money. Pray for those folks, because there's going to be a lot of death in Haiti. I mean, that place is a mudslide haven. you got gun sales hit 17 straight, monthly record up 27%. You've got feds enlist police to scan gun show customers. License plate report finds from the Wall Street Journal. I mean, this is getting crazy. You've got existential threats to world... Economic order, cloud IMF talks. They say Trump's the big problem. They're holding us hostage. You know, don't, don't, don't vote for Trump or we'll bring you into a depression. That just shows you how controlled the situation's got. But I want to run through your calls, Chris and uh, Uncle Sam and Donald and, and, and Johnny and everybody else that's holding, bam, bam, bam. And, and then I'm going to start getting to these clips because there's a lot I haven't gotten to. But since I mentioned it, here's Assange last night saying, you don't think at 3 a.m. I released the information. I just advertised for months, and then this week said it'd be a press conference and told intermediaries that it would be, uh, you know, absolutely uh, you know, decimating her. What was the quote? It was uh, devastating. And publicly, she will be indicted. But then it just turns into an Access TV production with muffled audio. Here it is. 
we understand that uh, if we're going to make a major publication uh, in relation to the United States uh, at a particular hour, we don't do it at 3 a.m. Uh, that's something uh, for um, uh, So uh, we have um, a great many uh, upcoming publications. Uh, the material that WikiLeaks is going to publish before the end of the year uh, is of a significant um, moment, such a significant moment, in different directions affecting um, uh, three uh, powerful organizations uh, in three different states, as well as, of course, uh, information previously referred to about the U.S. electoral process. But WikiLeaks needs to change in order to survive and thrive through the next few months. Uh, now, why we have been growing um, and why we are, while we are in a position to... Uh, All right, th that's enough. I mean, this is a bunch of mu muffled garbage. Now he says, though, supposedly, I can't find the quote, but that, that he's going to release some of the Hillary stuff before or on November 8th. Okay. We need time to analyze these tranches of material that people sent you because they believed it was vital, and you say it will indict her. So you're aiding and abetting someone you say should be indicted, Farage, if you don't release the information. That's the issue. You can do whatever you want. I, I think physically you're a hero. I admire much of what you've done. You've been through a lot four years in the embassy. God knows what, you're, what duress you're under. So I'm going to tentatively say that I'm giving you a pass on this, and I, I admire you in many ways. I don't attack you out of jealousy. I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't want to be in your position. But man, when you're up at you know, 5 a.m. hoping for some intel on Hillary and you don't deliver and you're up there with a bunch of simpering liberal women uh, puling around, I mean, it was pretty hard to take, bro. Why didn't you apologize that we can't release it at this time? We're still verifying the info or something. Why did you do it to me? Yeah, I know I've, I've read the quotes. He also promised that all documents related to U.S. election would be released by the 8th. But then I don't know where he says it. I, no, I know CNET News and the Daily Mail says he said it. I watched it last night. I did not hear it. Maybe I missed something. Where's the quote? So, I, look, I want to take the high road. In case I'm wrong, in case I'm being precipitous, I will apologize for calling you the dam holding back all of Hillary's BS. It was a different colloquialism I used, a little bit of a verbal flourish that I won't say in front of children. It wasn't really that dirty, but uh, it's just a fancy term for butt cork. Uh, and uh, I, I hope to say you're the hero of the age and not the enabler of Hitlery. Uh, but that's my bottom line. That's my bottom line. Let's go to the calls. Donald in Connecticut, you're on the air. You're in the path of some of the tracks of the old uh, hurricane. Matthew, what do you think? That's right. What I think is that uh, the devastation of Haiti that's happening now gives would give Donald Trump a platform from which to attack. I was going to say it earlier. I think Trump, I'm not going to let you steal my thunder. I meant to say it and, and it got, got distracted. Trump should fly into Haiti with his planes and food a day after it leaves, I mean, in a day, when it's gone in a day towards the U.S., he should fly down, bring food, and in a press conference, point out that Hillary stole 94.3% of the money, and, 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 oh, my God, exactly. Everyone start tweeting Trump. He needs to go now to Haiti. The, in, in, in a day and a half, it's going to be blue skies, total devastation. He needs to land on the tarmac with helicopters as if he has to, ahead of the jets coming in, and, and be giving people the food with a security detail, and, and then he needs to fly from there to the U.S. as the hurricane's hitting and be totally presidential. You're, is that what you're about to say? Yes. So rather than deal with something as a historical fact, you can deal with the present misery that anyone can see on any newsreel and, and e more. E and you then he says, I had to do this because I watched Crooked Hillary steal hundreds of millions from the Haitian children. I had to do this to stop her from having a new aid event where she steals the money again. Yes. And now, then he could give $5 million. Before, she's stealing the money before it sets up a situation where they're compromised going into this, and more misery is a result. 
you can show that in the, in the real time now. By the now, way, now. Donald, Donald, you didn't tell the call screener that. It just said uh, Haiti, Hurricane Matthew. But I was going to say that an hour ago and just forgot to. Our, our great minds thinking alike. Donald's got to go literally hours after it leaves. He's got to start preparing the mission now, loading the plane with basic food with a bigger pledge. He's got to go around the hurricane and land literally as the hurricane leaves in a stroke of bold beauty. Now you play some clips of the old man Bush and uh, Bill Clinton and praying for money, asking everybody to, to give up their money, and then show how little went to these people. And, and he can tear up the bushes history. and be bipartisan as well. It is an absolute stroke of genius. Please continue. Tell us what he should do. Because I, I threw out my ideas, you know, because I want folks to know they were mine. Uh, well, what was your yeah. idea? I'm sure it's similar but specific. Just to just to attack it from the using the using the news reels in a, in a, an immediate sense where. It's happening right now. Well, we're not talking about two years, three years ago. We're talking about what you can do and what the Clintons have created in the terms of misery and death that's unfolding right now. There's the headline. Donald Trump goes to Hurricane Matthew ravaged Haiti. He needs to go before Hillary. Oh, because listen, she'll then try to crawl down there or won't go once he's already gone, and it'll be a huge focus on her stealing the Haitian money. I think that's the number one thing against her. I think it's wonderful. And the other thing I want to say before I go is I believe that uh, that uh, George Soros is a, a U.S. citizen, is he not? Yes, he's a U.S. citizen. All right, he could be arrested for the sedition and treason that he's created. Why? Why isn't he? A, a Dallas police officer has filed suit against him in the Justice Department for inciting the murder of police officers. And clearly he's funded groups that put that rhetoric out. He's definitely uh, liable for it, and I think that's what needs to happen. So we're going to have a hell of a situation with this uh, people being uprooted with the hurricane, both uh, domestically and certainly in Haiti. And it presents itself as this wonderful opportunity, not, so, not for the Haitian people, but, but to show the deficiencies of what has happened. And people, we will really grab it. Yeah, I'm going to call Roger Stone right now uh, and see if he answers, because this is so important. I mean, I can I can try to get a hold of Trump, too, but the, the key is everybody needs to tweet at Trump, please go to Haiti, expose the fact that Hillary stole the money. I'm going to clip this clip out, put it out on YouTube right now. I'm going to shoot a produce report at the end of the show. Absolutely. In fact, I have all these great ideas in the morning that I have them on the show. And then I just forget to get to most of the real gravy here. That is a stroke of genius. Plus, Trump has always cared about people. He's always donated to emergencies. Uh, he, he absolutely needs to be presidential, which he's already been. And he needs to fly into Haiti right now, unannounced. He needs to come in tomorrow. That hurricane will be gone. Uh, in fact, let's look at the track. We can put it up on screen. It hit about two, three hours ago. The eye of the hurricane has already, last time I checked, moved off of Haiti. Uh, but still, it's in the eye of the storm. I mean, it's still blasting it and he needs to get in there uh right behind that sucker yeah it'll take about a day for that monster to move out and hit the bahamas he can fly uh right down out of the midwest and around that baby uh he can probably also land in dominican republic and get a helicopter escort if he wants to be safe because haiti is super third world and get in there but uh, he's a man of destiny this is what he needs to do do you agree Yes, I saw a clip where the, uh, some representative of Haiti at some meeting was saying to him, get behind us, get, the, uh, get behind us to show the Clinton's stealing, and we're on your oh, side. I remember that about two weeks ago. One of the leaders of Haiti, I think it might have been the president, was like, get behind us, Trump. Come here and help us, you know, talk about the fraud. They're in, and Haiti is inviting him in. We've got to find that clip right now. A Haitian leader invites Trump down. We need to find that clip. Great point, sir. Amazing, Donald. The entire region is behind him there, not just Haiti. Is your, name really is your name really Donald? Yes, it is. <laughs> That's cool. All right, man, I appreciate it. Donald, Donald, Donald Eldon, thanks. All right, Donald, you're awesome. I tell you, uh, this, is, this is so exciting. We have got to get Trump. We have got to get Trump. We have got to, I tell you, we've got to get Trump to go to Haiti right now. And then... The media will spin it if he doesn't do this, that he went to Haiti instead of going to America. So that thing will take another day once it leaves to get up there. He's got to come in, cancel what he's doing. Believe me, this is going to be a victory. Believe me, to quote Trump, believe me. Get in and then literally fly behind the hurricane landing and make a big spectacle that he's flying right behind the hurricane 
and then land. This is amazing. Storm chaser Donald Trump. There it is. Haitian Senate president. Exposed Clinton Foundation. Hillary Clinton tried to bribe me. Oh, my gosh. Get me that clip immediately. Haitian president exposes the Clinton Foundation. Wow. Yeah. My memory served. Let's get that clip. Guys, start your engines. Get these clips ready. During a break, I'm going to shoot a produced clip to Trump. We have got to do this right now. And obviously, I'm going to be getting on the phone here. Um, oh, my gosh. This is ab I, I bet Roger's already thought of this. Let me call him right now. Because this cannot wait. Again, they'll claim that he doesn't care about America and have that all over the news. That's why he's got to hit Haiti before and then be there right after it hits the U.S. Stroke of genius, I'm telling you right now. We've got to do this. That's all I'm thinking about 24-7 is how to defeat Hillary. I couldn't even basically sleep last night. I've had two and a half hours sleep. This is, this is history right now. This is a war. We're in a war. Guys, start texting Roger Stone. And, 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 and we need to, I mean, look, it's a no-brainer that he needs to get to Haiti. But again, then immediately to the United States back. Before the hurricane even hits, He's got to be in place in helicopters, you know, go around the storm in a plane, land, have helicopters waiting, be waiting. As soon as the hurricane blows out, if you've been in a hurricane, as soon as it leaves, it's like still. He needs to be right behind the hurricane in the worst hit area with floods behind him with the issue of raging water. Oh, my, it will devastate the enemy. This is the key. This is the key. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mm. Cry havoc and let loose the dogs of the info war, to quote William Shakespeare in his great play. Hmm. Okay, we've got uh, Uncle Sam's been holding forever. I'm going to go to break and come back and go to Uncle Sam. I'm going to go to uh, Chris in Virginia and then Canadian Soldier and Johnny and many others. Uh, just briefly, we've got... 23% off on the amazing nutraceutical super supplement, DNA Force. We rarely discount it. It funds the operation. The Hillary for President shirts will be discontinued in 34 days if you want those. The Bill Clinton rape shirt, InfoWarsStore.com. InfoWarsLife.com for the nutraceuticals are called toll free. 888-253-3139. Hell, I think I'm going to get on a plane and go to Haiti. I mean, this is it. History's happening now. Pull out all the stops. The president of the Haitian Senate stand up for your right. on September 18th, Get up, stand just stand two up. weeks ago, we, we covered it at the time, right. asked Trump up, to basically come to Haiti and expose how they stole the money and also sold watered-down drugs that people had shipped in. That video's up on Zero Hedge. We need to draft Donald Trump to go to Haiti because he's invited, meet with this guy, expose the bribery, talk about how she swindled 94.3% of the money, that's mainstream news, and just say the way they treated you, what they did, now you're in so much trouble, I'm here to try to get an initiative where 100% of the money actually goes to you, you know, after credit card expenses or whatever, after, you know, bank expenses to actually help, what do we really need to do to help Haiti? That will be a huge victory. Then he meets there for a day, turns around, flies in for where the U.S. gets hit. It will dwarf what he did in Mexico and Louisiana for being presidential and exposing corruption. I'm telling you, I was sitting there thinking this morning, abusing Islamic women, Hillary being a big supporter of Sharia law and putting people in charge in Libya that are for Sharia law and supporting Islamicists for Sharia law in Egypt and Syria and Iraq is one of her biggest crimes that women should wake up to. But man, stealing the money from little Haitian kids, there's a special place in hell for that. But don't worry, Bill Clinton's out in the news. It's up on Infowars.com by Kit Daniels. Bill Clinton criticizes Obamacare. Obama-Clinton infighting erupts. I mean, this is what Hillary always wanted. It's what the globalists wanted. Now she's trying to act like Trump. He's trying to act like Trump running around. Now he doesn't like Obamacare. Oh, yeah, right. These people are truly amazing. Hell, now the Democrats are getting hit with Obamacare and the fact that it's doubling, tripling prices and you can't keep your doctor and there's penalties. I would be surprised if they didn't run ads saying, Donald Trump passed 
Trump care and lied and said it was called Obamacare four years ago. But actually, Donald Trump did it. Now, here is the leader, and we'll give you his name as well and put this on screen, of the Haitian Senate. The president of the Senate. We'll put the article back up on screen. We'll play this clip and then go back to your calls. You guys put the zero hedge or, or, or just print it for me because I've been needing it for a little while. I know you're doing a great job. If I can just print me that. Uh, former Haitian president of the Senate is speaking out to tell the truth about Clinton Foundation at a Trump event. The former president said that Clinton was trying to buy him. She tried uh, to appeal to him. And then they've got his name. I remember looking it up and checking that he was, in fact, the former leader of the Senate. And a few years ago, he was in charge. Uh, it's got to have his name there. Uh, but to ex Haitian Senate president. Uh, let's go ahead and play that clip now, though, that Zero Hedge had. Uh, here it is. In 2010, the earthquake of Haiti, not only American taxpayers, but the whole world has given billions of dollars to the Clinton Foundation for the Haitians. Not only, not even 2% of that money went back to Haiti. So Mr. Trump, we are asking you, begging you, the Haitian community will side with you if one day you ask Hillary Clinton publicly to disclose the audit of all the money they have stolen from Haiti in 2010 after the earthquake. Bernard Frank Bernard, who was the leader of the Senate at the time, who they tried to bribe so he'd go along with the billions. I keep saying hundreds of millions being stolen. We're not funded by stealing Haitian money from little kids. We're funded by you supporting us. 23% off DNA Force and InfoWarsLife.com. We have the new uh, Biome Defense probiotic out as well. Your support is the lifeblood of this operation. I salute you. Stay with us. 100%. No guts, no glory. Fortune favors the bold. Our fortune is liberty. If Donald Trump goes to Haiti just hours after the hurricane leaves, he's on the tarmac. To bring aid, to pledge a couple million dollars, food, to call for Americans, to donate to certified good charities that can be researched very quickly, that actually deliver money to the people. He can show up, he can land, hell, he can fly in with Gary Haven. Haven flies in there all the time. He can go in there with Rand Paul, of all people, who's done a lot of free eye surgeries there. And he could have a coup d'etat pointing out with the former president of the Senate that Hillary stole billions and tried to bribe him. I mean, the Haitian leaders and others have invited Trump down. He, If he doesn't go, it is because uh, the people around him are giving him too many different conflicting you know, ideas. Trump must go. He must go now. He can't show up later. He can't just talk about it on air. He must go. In and out. All right, who's been holding the longest? Uh, Uncle Sam. Uh, then we'll go to Chris. Go ahead, Uncle Sam. Alex, good day, sir. I uh, want to thank you in a way you've never been thanked before. If it wasn't for Kid Daniels doing the story on me, because I have that info war booth in the French Quarter, I would not have the cameras I have now because a Latino man who doesn't want to be mentioned saw that story, came by, and gave me enough money to get the cameras I have now to be able to produce the videos that I've been able to produce. Well, that's uh, awesome. You know, we try to support citizen activists. I guess you have the bike that drives around with the TVs, educating people that reaches thousands a day. So great job. Thank you, sir. And I also met David Knight Labor Day out here with his wonderful wife. And I felt like you felt when you met Matt Drudge meeting David Knight. I was just... <laughs> no, it's great. Listen, I feel like that when I meet just common folks out there who have that light in their eyes, every race, color, and creed, who just want freedom. And believe me, even if they steal this election, which I don't think they're going to do, they're going to try... We're on the march. They're on the run. I mean, don't you see we have the momentum? Yes, sir. Well, I see it every day. If you go to see my videos, I'd like to point just two of the over 400 of them I have now, speaking of those people with the light in their eyes. The one here is about Haiti, and it was a famous band member from Haiti. It's called Who Do Voodoo, and he talks about how the Clinton Foundation has ripped off his country. That's one. But there's another one here that... Uh, had last month a significant Mississippi Democratic chairman working to defeat Clinton. 
I spoke to the chairman of Lamar County. Oh, I know. Democrats are turning against them in mass. Well, tell us your YouTube channel, brother, so we can find these clips and put them out. Yes, sir. It's under my name. It's Michael D. Barry. That's D I capital B A R I. All right, Michael, Michael D. Barry. Barry, we'll check those out. No, I know that the Haitian community is, is big in this country and is mooey angry at Hillary. But you know what? America deserves to be looted if we don't stand up to this. I mean, I mean, it's cold-blooded to sit there and steal the aid money from Haiti that good Americans have given and then say America is inherently racist when we elected a black president. I mean, it's truly sickening. I'm going to talk to the former head of psychological warfare of the State Department and other agencies straight ahead. But this is the right thing to do. It helps Haiti. It exposes the Clinton crimes. Uh, I say that uh, Trump must absolutely go to Haiti or he must send Pence, bare minimum. But it's got to be Trump, and he's got to go in right behind the hurricane. They'll blow out by tomorrow. It'll be blue skies. He's got to land and say, I want to draw attention to this hurricane because Hillary didn't show up in Louisiana the last storm. She, you know, she stole the money from these people. Meet with some of the government leaders. Uh, you know, they're on the tarmac because there will be security issues. Haiti is really dangerous. Uh, and Trump's no guts, no glory, man. I mean, I'm, I'm, let's do it. And then he's got to race behind the storm to land in the United States as well, or she'll spend it that he doesn't care about the U.S. That's fully war game. Launch Operation Trump Visits Haiti now. We played the clip earlier. I'm going to play it again. Bernard Sansarik, the article was in the Daily Caller last month. It was also in Zero Hedge. Haitian Senate president exposes Clinton Foundation. Hillary Clinton tried to bribe me. He goes on to speak of the nearly $2 billion taken in by the Clinton Foundation and the Associated Press even admits 94.3% of the money was kept by the Clintons and their organized crime syndicate. It's the biggest haul they ever got off all those evil, racist, white Americans and others that gave money to try to save the Haitian children. These people are the most racist, pig-like creatures you can imagine. I want to play this clip because I had the idea this morning and then a caller called in and he started saying, hey, Trump needs to, and I said, he needs to go to Haiti. He needs to go right after the hurricane blows out and point out that he's there to help deliver food and say I'm actually delivering something other than the Clintons and make it a focal point of her stealing the money. He can hold up news articles where she stole 94%. He can hold up news articles where her own charitable giving, 97% is to herself. I'm going to shoot a special video at the end of the show today about this. It's like two minutes long directly to Trump. And... He's got to do it. It's a it's 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 really a no brainer. Now they'll spin it that he wasn't here in the U.S. Even though Hillary didn't show up in Louisiana, it'll take another day and a half for it to hit Florida and then the East Coast. So he's got to be down. He can fly down through the central area of the Caribbean, turn to the east on the western side of Hispaniola, and land in the colony area of Haiti. It's still a colony, basically the globalist. Or if he wants a better security detail or say the airports are damaged, land uh, in the Dominican Republic, then have helicopter escorts bring him in and then pledge a million dollars and then food and then set up an open charity with groups that are already reputable and that deliver, you know, the majority of the money and then be a bullhorn for raising the, ha the Haitians uh, hundreds of millions of dollars and say, I'm here because as an American, I've watched what you've gone through with the earthquakes and the hurricanes and the landslides. And, you know, Haiti deserves a real shot at this and to not have the Clintons steal 94% of the money as X newspaper reports. That's why I'm here with known charities uh, that deliver the maximum amount of the money. I have nothing to do with it, but I'm donating $1 million to this charity. And that's why we're here to, to, uh, as a bully pulpit to call for folks to really give to Haiti this time and to not allow the Clintons to, again, raise money off the backs of Haitians because they're so bold, they're so criminal, they're so corrupt. This woman is such a criminal, her husband's such a criminal, and here is the former leader of the Senate who Bill and Hillary offered money to to cover up the billions being stolen. Here he is and other leaders right now. And he can plan it, I can plan it for him real fast. I mean, if his crew won't get it together, like getting yard signs, the 40,000 the Republicans needed two days ago and somebody had to call Trump himself to get it done and Trump got it done, not bitching at the campaign, but get your act together. Not Trump. He's incredible working 18 hours a day himself doing all the work of his campaign staff. Who think that it's cool to be on Fox News. Give me a break. Grow up. This is a war, an information war. And you can get a hold of these people right now. You can fly into the Dominican Republic because the airfields will be damaged in Haiti. You can fly in there then on a transport plane, whatever you want, unmarked. 
It's a very dangerous place. I don't recommend he puts Trump one down there. But go ahead. He's bold. Do it. And I'm going to be on the phone today scrabbling to get this done. Okay, just like I said, they're going to try to steal the election. you got to get out ahead of it. Obama said there's no such thing as election fraud. Now they say Homeland Security's got to take over the election because the Russians. Folks, we've got to get on the offense. Now, I'm ranting right now, but let's play this clip of the former leader of the Haitian Senate, Bernard, how do you pronounce this? S-A-N-S-A-R-I-C-Q. So let's go ahead and play this clip. Here it is. In 2010, the earthquake of Haiti not only American taxpayers, but the whole world has given billions of dollars to the Clinton Foundation for the Haitians. Not only, not even 2% of that money went back to Haiti. So Mr. Trump, we are asking you, begging you, the Haitian community will side with you if one day you ask Hillary Clinton publicly to disclose the audit of all the money they have stolen from Haiti in 2010 after the earthquake. The Haitians are ready to cheer you, Trump. Come to their aid for real, like you promised to do for us. Break the back of globalism that wants to prey on people. And, and, and you know, she talks about Bernie Sanders or basement dwellers who have no future, just where she wants you. Baristas, ha, 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 bitter clingers. Well, Alex Jones and Steve Pachenik and Donald Trump and Patriots we want prosperity. We want the true engine of liberty and, the, and a true engine of an economy that, by the way, this leaked video we have of the 90s, strangely enough, Obama's talking about to Kenyans, but then making it race-based. We're going to premiere that this hour. Uh, but so much going on, so much happening. Now, I haven't pre-scripted this with Dr. Pachenik. I don't know his view on this. He wanted to talk about uh, the situation with Libya, the situation in Syria. I want to get his take on what is WikiLeaks doing, not releasing the data now? Have they made a deal? SteveBachinic.com has a lot of articles breaking down what's happening in Aleppo and more. But he's also an expert on what happened uh, in Haiti with the Clintons and what in the world's going on. Uh, audio reveals that John Kerry told Syrians behind closed doors. It's pretty amazing. So there's a lot going on to cover on the waterfront. I wanted to get Dr. Pachinic on about something he talked about about five, six years ago about de-evolution from federal and global control saying the EU will collapse. Uh, the federal government will become a joke. The South and the Midwest and Texas and other places, everybody's going to flee from the socialism, from the collectivism. There's going to be a new boom in these areas, but we're going to have to get involved and locally involved and stop following these illegal orders. And I didn't roll my eyes. I mean, I knew that was coming, but we've seen Catalonia. We've seen the Brexit. He was absolutely on target. And a lot of folks uh, were really excited about that. But I don't know. So we'll get into some of that today. But am I wrong, Dr. Steve Pachenik? Um former head of psychological warfare of the State Department, you name it. Am I wrong in saying if Trump goes into Haiti right behind the hurricane, it'll be a huge bully pulpit to expose what I think is probably the number one issue. They're swindling uh, through the Clinton Foundation of the Haitians and others. Now, you and I have not talked about this, so I want your audience to understand we didn't discuss it beforehand. Not only are you not wrong, but a month ago I wrote a blog saying that Hillary, Bill Clinton, as indicted by their daughter Chelsea, were directly responsible not only for billions of dollars going into the Clinton Foundation, but it also includes the United Nations peacekeepers. She indicted her own family and the United Nations for the death of 10,000 innocent Haitian people. Now, the reason I know Haiti and I grew up with Haitians is because I speak Creole and I grew up in the south of France and in Miami. So the Haitians were my people. I grew up with them at school. I grew up with them in Cuba and elsewhere. So I know and I speak Creole. More importantly, I think your audience should understand Haiti was developed by a physician, Dr. Duvalier. He was sent there on behalf of the Rockefeller Foundation in the 20s and 30s to uh, eliminate smallpox. And he did in the book Arrowsmith by Sinclair Lewis, the fiction book. He's talking about Dr. Duvalier. From that point on, Dr. Duvalier became the leader of Haiti and did some good things, but was very strong and created a unit called the Tonto Maut. And the Haitians know that I know who Dr. Duvalier is. Now, ironically, you and I did not talk about this, but 
Kid Doc, or Little Doc, his son, was, I was involved in extricating him from Haiti into France, the Côte d'Azur, because he stole $500 million. In that tradition of Aristides, Doc Duvalier, Le Kid Doc, we have the Clintons, who not only stole billions of dollars, but they were directly implicated with the Secretary General of the United Nations, listen to what I'm saying, by everyone involved, including Chelsea's notes about what happened in Haiti as directly responsible for the death of 10,000 Haitian men, women, and children because of the E. coli sepsis that they created defecating in the water. So there is criminal charges involved in that. And that was the UN, so I forgot. The Secretary General of the United Nations. So I forgot. Start back over. You're right. It's not just stealing uh, almost two billion. No. It's not the billions it's that death. they stole. It was the incompetency that occurred and the specific malfeasant behavior that even Chelsea wrote about in the notes that were released uh, about the United Nations and their incompetency that was sent in along with the people who belonged to the Clinton Foundation where they had no idea of what they were doing. They were specifically negligent. Not only were they robbers, but they were murderers. And no one has brought that to the forefront. So I wrote about it a month ago. No one said a word. You and I have not talked. But there is there are ten thousand Haitians who have been who are dead. Not question about it. There is no if and and buts about the fact that the Clintons, the United Nations Secretary General Moon, are directly responsible for the death of ten thousand Haitians. And the reason for that is they brought in Nepalese soldiers who had no idea of what they were doing. The Clintons had no idea. Blink Bill Clinton, as usual, is completely incompetent, as was Hillary, and they had all kinds of cross purpose activities going on, but it was negligence. It's like malpractice in medicine. It's malpractice in politics. And this is what Trump should bring up through General Flynn, he himself. Now, should he go to Haiti? I would appreciate it as a fellow Haitian or someone who grew up with the Haitians that he would show support. But it's enough to explain tonight, including Michael Pence, who I have a great admiration for, to articulate the amount of discontent, malfeasance, corruption, and negligence, malpractice, that the Clintons have imposed and created, not only in Haiti, but all over the world. But Haiti is a good example. Now, for the Haitians to come up and protest. That's very brave of them. But I also explained to the audience, the Haitians are very tough people. When I say tough, I don't just mean they're nasty. They can be very tough. And when they accuse somebody of malfeasance, that's not something that comes off the top of their head. That's not a, just a, a, a gesture of anger. The Haitians have absorbed a lot of humiliations, a lot of hurt on behalf of America and the French in particular. But specifically, when it came to the death of their children, men and women, the Haitians correctly stated that Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, Chelsea, who even indicted her own family in the notes, and Moon, Big Moon, the Secretary General of the UN, and the people in the UN were directly responsible for the death of 10,000 innocent men and women. It was not covered by the media. As usual, you had to bring it out. And as usual, you and I did not discuss this beforehand. You had no idea what my ideas were concerning Haiti. But it turned out I was involved with Haiti. I know you've been involved in basically everything. So, Dr. Steve Pachinik, I mean, I think Trump really should get there and get there immediately. And, and, and I mean, the leaders of Haiti, many of them are, are ready to be with him. He's in already they've already asked him to come because they know that he's been exposing Hillary and the foundation. This is a godsend. This is a terrible thing happening to Haiti. But but it's a godsend if Trump takes advantage of this. A, do you agree with that? B, how would you do it? Well, what I agree with, I know the Haitians, and they're very effective in America in terms of organizing for political action. They are very smart. They're highly tutored in both the French and the English cultures. They know exactly what they're doing. They're highly entrepreneurial. These are not people who are asking for help or donations. So if Trump were to go down there and make a presence and state that he would help the Haitians, that would solidify his base. 
Uh, the issue of the storm, you know, we're just waiting for it, but there are much bigger storms than the, the physical storm. The storm that you p- presented in terms of Hillary being sick again is so important. I can't emphasize that enough to the audience and to the Democrats and to the Americans. We cannot have an, a highly physically, mentally compromised presidential candidate. It's just not possible. We are at a point in the history of America that if that continues, we will have all our allies abandon us, as the Philippines are doing, the Russians who have been helping us have been doing, and we have no position to give our military and our intelligence a direct strategy and tactic. Well, that was my next question, uh, moving off of Haiti. Uh, Obviously, the Russians have now done a 40-person nuclear war drill. They've suspended weapons grade, uh, uranium uh, decommissioning and transfers. And they're saying you were aiding al-Qaeda, you were aiding al-Nazra. We had a deal, as you know, the Pentagon working with them behind the scenes to actually take out the bad guys. They're finally mopping them up. And then magically we have bombings uh, of uh, Syrian government forces every time they're about to win. The Russians say, we're not going to back out on our deal. If you kick al-Nazra out, we, you know, Assad's going to go. We, I mean, and I think the Russians will keep their promise. So what has changed? Because the Russians are really going into a very belligerent uh, stance now, saying they've been double-crossed. Well, let me put it this way. When our own Secretary of State, the incompetent, incredibly incompetent John Kerry, who I remember going into the Vietnam War, I was in the Nixon administration, brought his own camera crew, can talk badly and allow that the, his own speech to come back to the president of the United States, undermine the president, no matter what you might think of him, undermine our military to say our military should have been there. He should be dismissed summarily. Well, it shows the whole double dealing nastiness of these globalists. They're not Americans. They're globalists using the U.S. for their own profits and control. That's why no one has respect for us. They don't understand that they're not good leaders. They're so delusional. It, it just has the smell of, of, of failure about them. Well, John Kerry was an incompetent. He was picked because he is incompetent. That is the most important lesson we have to learn in terms of all the people that we have right now. It's the same reason Biden is a senator. It's the same reason Kerry is a senator. It's the same reason Hillary was a senator. She did nothing. And Trump was bringing up the point, but he has to specifically... Uh, mentioned that she came in promising a quarter of a million jobs in New York State, and instead there was a decrease of 20% of the jobs that were already there. Trump has to now go into numbers and explain why it is the Clinton Foundation is so corrupt and how it is that the Clinton uh, household is a trust fund so they don't have to pay taxes and how many billions of dollars went into the Clinton Foundation. Oh, I know. Bitching about Trump avoiding taxes with the very same loopholes they use, but they don't build anything. Well, but the key here is that, in my opinion, I think Trump's people correctly leaked it out. What it allows Trump to do now and his people is to explain that this is a legitimate way of approaching business when you do, in fact, have real estate. And many of us in, in, our, in this war have little amounts of real estate, and we do what we can to pay as little tax as possible. But then he has to turn around and show how much corruption – in the nonprofit organization of the Clinton Foundation exists, and more importantly, they've never been audited. Think of this. They've never been audited. And so Trump has to demand an auditing of the Clinton Foundation, and she has to demand it before any election occurs, because once they're audited, you will find transgressions of the law of the IRS. Oh, they admit money laundering. Their their I mean, their foundations. Well, I mean, t- you'll see the connection to Haiti. You'll see the connection to the Russians. You'll see the connections to the Saudis. You'll see the connections to every country that Bill Clinton, that incompetent uh, Lothario. I mean, he's a pathetic man. I've met him. He's what do you pathetic. make of the image? Of, I don't know if you saw this of them in Tel Aviv, and he won't get on the plane for twenty minutes. And finally, Obama's rolling up his sleeves saying, get up here, Bill, 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 to have another president talking to him like a dog. And then Clinton's body language is he's out of his mind. Clinton looks like a zombie when he's in public. What is going on there? Well, Bill Clinton was never a very effective president, contrary to what the liberals want to talk about. He's had a... 
besmirched career. He's totally ineffectual. He's an addict. His mother was not a nurse. His whole history is contrived. Again, he came out of the Sam Walton School of Intelligence. I mean, Sam Walton was the head of incarceration for the Italians and the Germans in the United States. So the intelligence community, particularly on the civilian side, Catholics in Action, CIA, sponsored him. And this is what I'm trying to stop through you people, through, um, uh, through Alex Jones and all. It's the CIA's in- intervention into our politics. Not only is it Bill Clinton, it's Bush Jr., another moron. Then we have Obama, who's had no experience whatsoever, had no strategy and no accomplishments. Now we have Trump, whose right-hand man is not a CIA operative, but a military intelligence operative. And what you see playing out here is what I've been saying for years. No, it's the total war between what's left of the army, the oldest U.S. institution, older than the Declaration of Independence, uh, and this foreign takeover. Correct. And the CIA and their civilian counterparts. It's not an accident that Obama allowed John Brennan to av- to uh, eliminate human, which they did very poorly, human intelligence. Because that ends up blinding the country to the takeover. It's clearly, this was all meant to take the country down. Well, what I'm saying is, in my in my novel, and I don't often talk about maximum no, ability, no, do it. it's, it's very accurate to say, look, if a president overreaches his or her mandate, there will be a form of military coup. It's not an accident. I was and it's, and it's already day. happened. I want you to speak this when we come back. Is this this happened? You talked about it four years ago. Colonel Schaefer Correct. talked about it. Uh, Tosh Plumley talked about it. Uh, then Cy Hirsch came on uh, just last year and said, "I just want to come on and say you guys basically broke this." He told me off air, he said, "Great job," but you heard him on air, and he just said, "Yes, this is all accurate." And released his own information, backing up it was like a soft coup against Obama and the globalist. And so I want to ask, it seems like they've kind of mopped that up now and are kind of back in control and are moving ahead, uh, or, or, or there's a partial takeover of the military that's happened when they kick Flynn and a bunch of others out. So if I'm wrong, correct me, but where does this go after all this? Stay right there, Dr. Pachinik, stevepachinik.com. Because I, I, listen, I'm sitting here watching Hillary engage in all forms of treason, butchering the country. She's out to get American workers. She wants to make us poor to control us. We have audio of her admitting it. And it's it's just like, are are our so-called elites really this crazy to kill prosperity just because the elites, some of these Hollywood elites want to piss on America? Is this all just some giant ritual so you guys can flush this country down the toilet like some child sacrifice? I mean, I don't see this happening. Now that we've got callers that have been holding since the last hour, but Dr. Pachenik can speak to whatever topics you bring up here in about 10 minutes when we go to you. Johnny uh, in Florida and, of course, uh, Glenn in Las Vegas, Canadian soldier in Canada. Travis in Michigan and others. Robbins in the Virgin Islands will get to you as well. Uh, this hour is brought to you by the nutraceuticals, the vitamins, the minerals, the supplements at InfoWarsLife.com. It's been seven years in the making. We've only been having these nutraceuticals for five years, but it's seven years in the making from the firm we got it from. The very best 50 billion active and live cultures. Uh, we're talking 23 top probiotic strains. It is Biome Defense from InfoWarsLife.com. It's a great product, and it funds our operation. We also have 23% off DNA Force, our flagship product, with the Bio PQQ, the CoQ10, 100-plus studies, you name it. Uh, that's available at InfoWarsLife.com. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. The Hillary for President shirts are a collector's item. I'm going to stop making them after the election. That's only 20 uh but uh, 34 days away, and so that's that. If you want to support us and get one of these shirts, it has InfoWars.com on the right-hand shoulder, as well as Legalized Freedom, InfoWars.com on the back. It's a great way to spread the word and support the broadcast. InfoWarsStore.com, or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Whether it's solar panels and their control units, or whether it's high-quality water filtration or air purifiers, or whether it's non-GMO heirloom, open-pollinated seeds, shortwave uh, crank or solar radios, emergency radios, and books, films, you name it, InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com, or 888-253-3139. StevePachinik.com has got links to his novels, his articles, uh, his stories as well. A lot of excellent information. We got 33% off on the solar panel control units and solar panels for a limited time as well at InfoWarsStore.com. Okay. Getting back to Dr. Steve Pachinik, we were looking at where we are in this country. And you see the military leaking information, mainly the Army. Uh, you see 
Not the army's perfect, <laughs> Lord, Lord, no. But that's 1775. The, 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 the first thing in the country was the army. It was already being set up before the Declaration of Independence uh, got ready. It was already warmed up and ready. George Washington in command. And you see where that frontier army was you know, built into to beat the Redcoats, and the rest is history. And here we are with the U.S. being handed over to globalists, the TPP, multinationals, one-sided trade deals, globalists working against us, nationalism rising across the world, countries breaking away, regions breaking away, that de-evolution, which is a good thing, from centralized tyrannical control. And you've made a lot of predictions that have come true, Dr. Pachinik, looking at Trump, looking at the military. Am I wrong in saying four years ago, cut and dry, our government's backing al-Qaeda in Syria. On the hills of Benghazi, there is a quiet awakening, not even a mutiny because we've been hijacked. The military says, no, we're not going to be al-Qaeda's air force. We see senators, to their credit, come out like Paul and, and Cruz and, and, and repeat talking points from this show. Soros and people flip out, but you know they still can't stop us. Then quietly our military starts rolling back al-Qaeda. They changed the name to ISIS. Saudi Arabia puts huge support behind it. But four years later with the Russians and others and U.S. intelligence, which is admitted, countermanding Obama's criminal orders and Hillary's criminal orders from when she was at state, that's rolled back. Now they're finally about to defeat ISIS in many areas. ISIS declares an emergency a month ago, says shelter in place, start attacking wherever you're at. We see the attacks. Hillary tries to deny those are attacks because it's her own people double-crossing her. Doesn't fit her narrative. Uh, that blows up in her face, but it does seem like now they've kind of countermanded it, and our military is doing some strikes, or at least NATO is, against the Syrian forces. Is that accurate, or when you talk to your folks, what's really happening, Dr. Pachinik? Well, what's really happening is in the Philippines, the president of the Philippines not only insulted our president, called him the bastard of a whore, which is unconscionable, no matter who Obama is or... That's the presidency of the United States. He just asked and requested that our special forces leave Mindanao and the Philippines. And he doesn't want our military in the Philippine bases or Subic Bay. That happened once when I was Deputy Assistant Secretary of East Asia. And I said to the Philippines, the Filipinos, you do this and I will pull away every visa and every American passport that we have granted to the Philippines, including to the president of the, of the Philippines. And I'm giving a warning to the president of the Philippines. Do not, do not threaten our soldiers. Do not uh, extradite or take out our And he's issued forces. new insults and new threats. What does this signify? Well, what it signifies is that Obama has failed completely. He's failed um, domestically. Obamacare is now considered a disaster. It went out of it was too expensive. They never really planned it out. Uh, Nancy Pelosi was, as usual, incompetent. The Democrats were totally incompetent. They don't understand numbers. Ethna's pulling out. The insurance companies are pulling out. And so instead, the Democrats are crying for government-provided uh, health care, which is the absurdity of absurdity. Sure, it's cloud and pivot. Blow up the old system on purpose. They Correct. think we're dumb enough to well, go to their next level. Blow the system. They, they're just incompetent. What's happening is we don't have a person like Trump who can read a balance sheet and a cash flow statement. Hillary and Bill have never looked at a balance sheet or a PL statement. They know nothing about building a business, nothing about creating assets. They only know how to work pay for play. We cannot have that anymore. Our military is on standby. They understand what it is I'm saying. The oath takers are standing by the, our military and intelligence community. However, this administration has really gone out of its way to feminize our military, in particular your young man who correctly said we're going to spend several million dollars to provide surgery for transgender. Is this a joke? I've got guys who have a PTSD. I have people who have never seen psychiatrists. I have more PTSD and a higher frequency of suicide than we've ever had before because we don't have enough psychiatrists. 2023 a day. Well, it's not only 23 a day, but think of it for a moment. They send these boys, these young men and women, into harm's way for a war that we really did not need. And when they come back, they discard them. And the new VA, who he, uh, the new Veterans Administration administrator, he's totally incompetent. Well, here's an example. Joe Biggs was blown up in armored vehicles twice, hit by shrapnel twice on record. 
and they just will not give him health care. He's been there like 100 times, the big facility in Austin. They just say, we don't have your paperwork. Come back next week. It's all a big joke, and they put him on these death lists, I think politically, because he says people that are little minions of the globalists, they get their health care. Well, the point here is that we don't have a Veterans Administration, despite the fact they brought in some businessman who had gone to West Point, despite the fact that they're totally rife with corruption. Again, what we're talking about is getting rid of a system that is so corrupt, a plutocracy that's run by money. You're talking about James Comey of the FBI, incompetent. Loretta Lynch of the Department of Justice, incompetent and compromised. You're talking about John Brennan of the CIA, a second quality CIA analyst who became the head of the CIA because he could, he was a sycophant. But you have the guys like Michael Flynn, who are not sycophants. They work for Trump because they defied the intelligence system, as I did. We're not beholden to them. And Mike Flynn said it exactly correctly. He said all of our generals, the three, four stars and others who retired, received their incredible pensions. And at the same time, they're on the board of directors because they don't want the, anything to change. Well, that has to change. When jo George Marshall came in, he fired 600 of our people right away, our generals, our admirals, in order to bring in men like Eisenhower, who was the brilliant commander. But at the age of 59, he was still a colonel. I've got men here at 59 or three stars, never been in combat. And then we had Patton, who Trump liked and I liked. But you have to remember, Patton was an out-of-the-box thinker. Trump needs that. He needs Well, by the way, speaking of Flynn, I never played his full speech three weeks ago when Trump uh, chumped the media uh, on the whole uh, Hillary thing and the Birther thing and the Obama thing and actually had a bunch of uh, Congressional Medal of Honor winners and generals and admirals there. When Flynn got up, I never aired the full speech. He said, this is 1776. This is Lexington and Concord. Our country's under attack. He said, basically, this is a war and was absolutely on fire up there. But the reality is, that's what's happening. Let me ask you this question. What happens, though, if she steals the election? Because I mean, what are your big concerns with them, quote, bringing in... My concern is that she will, not, she will steal the election because they control some of those machinery. And that's what's really uh, nefarious. They have a hold on all kinds of uh, utility and, and machinery and other elements that control the so-called delegates and superdelegates. My real concern is she comes in, she's not qualified mentally and physically. She has Parkinson's disease. Her doctor is incompetent. Like the Columbia physicians and surgeons should have come out and said it. The Secret Service should have said it. The FBI should have said it. The CIA. Well, There's in fairness, no the Secret Service did reach out to us a month before she fell well, down. That's that's nice, but that's not enough. Their job is to us. It is not to Hillary Clinton or to Trump. They're, they're being paid by me and by you. That's right. They work for us. What will happen is we will have on standby, which is what I wrote in Maximum Vigilance, we will have on standby a group of military officers and intelligence officers who will be ready, if needed, to take over the government. And the reason I say this is when she is incapacitated, I went through this several times. Henry Kissinger, the, the, one of the finest things he ever did, and I've criticized him, was he took over the government when Nixon was disabled. And he and Schlesinger and others had a soft coup. At the same time with uh, uh, Reagan, Nancy Reagan, who was brilliant, asked James Baker, to come in in the National Security Council and the White House, and he literally took over the White House. Sure, was that when Alexander Haig was running around saying, I'm in control now? No, that Haig was totally out of it. He, yeah. anyone no, no, but that was at the same time. Yeah. I'm sorry? That was at the same time he famously went on TV and correct. said... Correct. Yeah. That's correct, Alex. But Haig was not seen as a, as a very competent individual, and he wasn't. He was a sycophant of Douglas MacArthur. The one who was in charge and was not a sycophant was James Baker, the Secretary of State. And he then, in turn, allowed us to have a smooth transition. So this issue of a de de debilitated presidency is a very dangerous issue for us now. That's why on, on no other consideration you have to bring in Trump and his people. But Trump has to identify who his Secretary of State will be, who his Secretary of Defense will be beforehand so that we have a good idea that he is ready to implement a full... What would you do right now if you were Trump? Because he's got too many advisors. He's all over the map. I would fire, if I, right now, I would fire Christie 
Giuliani and put Michael Pence as my surrogate. I would then hire somebody like me or others who understand exactly how to work a debate and the psychology of debate and focus not on himself, but focus on how the mathematics of his oh, life. Yeah, I would totally ignore everything she says to me and just bring up the topics I want to bring up. That's correct. He has to be in control. He's not in control. And he has to bring in the fact that he is a businessman and really a mathematician. He went to the University of Pennsylvania to Wharton School. He understands. What and as soon as the moderator, uh, I mean, give me a break. We know what 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 Anderson Cooper is going to do. As soon as he interrupts him five or six times, I'd say, hey, you're not interrupting her. Am I debating both of you? He needs to slap him down because if he can't attack the woman, he can certainly attack Anderson Cooper. Well, he doesn't have to attack either one. Anderson Cooper has been, he was, he was an intern two years in a row with the CIA. I mean, Anderson Cooper is a sweet-looking little boy, but he's not a serious, uh, intelligent individual who can really penetrate the issues. He knows this. He listens to it. The real issue has to do with uh, Trump's control of the debate. Yeah, Anderson Cooper is irrelevant. So is Hillary. There has to be somebody on the team who explains to him there's an opening strategy, a middle strategy, and an end strategy. It's not an ex. Well, Trump did meeting. meet with Baker privately, and then it leaked two days later. I actually even knew about it. But, I mean, what do you make of that meeting? Does it, does it... Well, I don't know what James Baker said, but in working with James Baker, I know Baker needs others to be able to implement that kind of strategy. Baker is a very serious man, a very good uh, manager, but he brings in those people who he thinks are the best and the brightest. I don't think Trump has the best and the brightest. Right now, he has to change his team. He has to be able to understand systematically that I is not a word that belongs there. He has to understand that the numbers that he created can be utilized for our country, and he has to do that through a didactic Sure, way. why doesn't the, 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 the different cobbled together groups of the elite wants someone to bring optimism back and turn the engine of the economy on. Why do the globalists admit they want to keep the economy stagnant so they can con consolidate control? Well, that's not only consolidate control. It's really uh, the globalists or these bankers, are, are they're falling apart. Let, let me give you an example. Deutsche Bank is one of the most crooked banks in the United States and in Germany. For years, Deutsche Bank has committed irregular activities. Finally, the United States government went after Deutsche Bank, slapped them with a $54.4 billion fine. Deutsche Bank could not handle it. They ran to Angela Merkel, who's really quite a good leader, despite the fact she brought in immigrants. Sure. I mean, isn't this part of this covert trade war going on? Not really a covert trade war. What's happening is what I said to you about devolution. The devolution entails all kinds of financial chicanery where the banks can no longer create any increase in revenue. So the they bring themselves they out of the equation because they become so stagnant, we're forced to create a new economy. That, well, yeah. I mean, honestly, the, the black economy or the economy that's uh, uh, the hidden economy that works off the books is far, is far more important to us in the United States than the credit card economy. Because and that's the why the big card... box stores are inherently at war with the original barter economy, because they see it as a threat. Well, the box stores, yeah, that's correct in a way, Alex, but the box stores are going under. If one thing you can be certain of is you will see... Every major mall is going on. No, no, I already see things reverting back to smaller stores local. Correct. And, and in the areas I live in, the rural south, we have bartering all the time. The IRS cannot handle it. They don't want to. It's basically a black economy, which really does make America work. The truckers, the, the entrepreneurs. And notice, even though they say the south is the poorest area in the country, it has a much lower crime rate than places you know, that supposedly have more money. And that's because there's a huge black economy. Well, it's not only because of a huge black economy, it's also because we have uh, six hours and we have, uh, you know, sort of shotguns and, and we believe in the Second Amendment. I mean, it's, it's very clear why the South guns. is far stronger. You don't walk here and if you happen to be a stranger and you want to hold somebody up, you better be very certain that you're not facing a barrel. And it's as simple as that. I mean, Hillary has all those people around her. Obama has all those people protecting him. He has over 700 Secret Services, which we pay for. And then he can spout about gun control. I mean, it's a farce. He knows that. Thousands of blacks have been killed by blacks in Chicago. He doesn't say a word. He hasn't given any money for mental health. Well, they've clearly gone to this whole weaponized race thing, and I think it's blown up in their face. What do you think? Well, it's 
totally blown up in the face because the national uh, North Carolina that one episode was absurd. It didn't reflect anything that I saw in terms of the African American middle class and upper middle class community. I was traveling 4,000 miles on the East Coast, up and down the states. You don't see that problem. You don't see African Americans who are discontent. They're riding. They're driving. Sure, it's, they're, 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 they're creating a perception to hide what they've done to them. We're going to come back, take a few final call, phone calls. We've got a special guest, Paul Watson, hosting the fourth hour. By the way, Paul Watson was jogging and pulled a muscle. He's not doing the fourth hour. He's doing it tomorrow. I'm going to do part of it. David Knight's coming in. I just learned that uh, during the break. We're going to have continued coverage tonight. Kicking off at 7 o'clock Central live with a three to four hours. I think they want to go like four hours. I was like, they'll be live for three hours. Is it out longer? So we'll see tonight, 7 o'clock Central coverage and, and live streams with our own feed of the debate, the, the VP debate uh, tonight. We're going to go to break in a moment. I promise I'm going to Glenn in Las Vegas and Robin in the Virgin Islands and uh, Johnny in Florida and everybody straight ahead here in about five minutes. But closing out with Dr. Steve Pachinik, I know we have great people you know, in this country, in the private entrepreneurial areas, great people in the military who have set up a lot of, you know, I'm mean, against a lot of bad stuff, but I've seen the Clintons get away with our missile secrets to China and all these major sellouts and selling us out to all these foreign interests. Why, why do they have such incredible cover? I mean, I know they represent a bunch of, you know, corrupt elites, but it seems like they're too big to fail. And if they've already gotten away with so much, why couldn't they get away with stealing an election? I mean, I, I, I'm really concerned. They can get away with stealing an election, but eventually what happens is their tendency on both sides, including Bill and Hillary, is self-destructive. And even their own daughter, Chelsea, brought that out in the notes that she took while she was in Haiti. And she noticed how destructive their own team and the people were, including her own family, when they uh, tried to implement anything effective in Haiti. The truth of the matter is we have a very corrupt system that it's based on two elements. To be a politician, which is really not a, a, a profession anymore, you have to be a panderer and you have to be vulnerable. When that, those two elements come together, that means you want the kindness of strangers and at the same time the kindness of strangers manipulates that individual. It's all about manipulation. And in effect, they don't create anything. There are no assets. What's really beautiful right now, as much as I explained years ago that Catalan would break away from Spain and that Spain was a non-functioning country, there, there is no government in Spain now. And every Spaniard is happy. They are happy because they don't have a president, they don't have a prime minister, and what's working is exactly what you and I talked about. And Spain is the example. Every region in Spain now is functioning at capacity because you don't need a president. The presidency of the United States is so irrelevant as a position. I can't even tell you how much money it costs us to move a president from one point to another. Obama is a disaster. What he underlined very clearly was whether you're black or white, but you're still incompetent and you're sponsored by the CIA. You're a disaster by definition because you've done nothing, you've gone nowhere, and you're not going to accomplish anything. So from now on, we have to understand if we're going to implement anything in the White House, we need somebody who created something. Despite now, Trump does Trump it. Uh, I mean, he wants to get the, the globalists and insiders off our backs. What Trump is going to do if he gets there, he's going to clean out house immediately. But I have to know, and the, the, the audience has to know, who is on his team. Besides Mike Flint, I want to know who is the Secretary of State, who's the Secretary of Defense, who's going to be the domestic. Yeah, his CIA defense. pick is, 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 is not Correct. good. It's not only the CIA pick, but who are the people? If they, He's talking to Giuliani and Chris. He's talking to two people who are involved in 9-11, both of whom are highly compromised. Are you talking, I mean, Chris Giuliani was, was within 12 hours of 9-11. He had 154 dump trucks ready to go and take away the evidence. So Giuliani is highly compromised. He's not a very effective leader, and the New Yorkers don't like him. No, that's right. The building was blown into nice little pieces. He had the dump trucks with GPS on every piece of metal. Correct. And then Christie has a, a New Jersey, which is failing financially and politically. I just went through the state. He's compromised. So Trump has to be very careful who, and who he's picking and has to associate. Sure. With. I'll just say this. I mean, the reason I trust Trump is he's got the elite so scared of him and so upset. But I, I, I absolutely we've got to keep his feet to the fire and keep him honest. Uh, Steve Pachenik, 
Facebook.com. Folks can also follow you on Twitter. We'll put that up on screen. I look forward to speaking to you again. Very, very serious uh, uh, situation unfolding. The debate cover tonight, fourth hour coming up. Stay with us. Your phone calls, 70 seconds away. I'm Alex Jones. Hillary has arrogance for you. She wants to make you poor and stupid. It's the only way she can thrive over you. But the great hand of doom is stretching out. I forgot to ask Pachinik, who's a psychiatrist and a bunch of other stuff. What drugs could take her from not being able to walk to look at half decent? She looked terrible, but compared to what she looked like, she looked great. And to actually talk for 90 minutes. I mean, how did she do that? I, I meant to ask him that. We'll have to ask him next time. We've got Glenn, and we've got Robin, and we've got Johnny. We've got everybody going to you right now. Glenn in Vegas, thanks for holding her on the air. Hey, good afternoon, Alex. God bless you. God nice bless to you. talk to you finally. Listen, another sheepdog and uh, myself, we're up with you at 2 in the morning, so a little disappointed, but uh, I'm glad you did that. Don't feel bad. So you're talking about WikiLeaks, uh, so folks say, just joined us. What is your gut on, on, on what Assange is doing? Well, here's what I was going to say. Um, let's go back. And this, I wish I had talked to Dr. Pachinik about this. Uh, just, of course, he's a... He's, He's been in that uh, Ecuadorian embassy for five years. He's going to be stir crazy. We, and you got that earlier today. The man is probably you know, on edge. I don't know about threats so much as his. He's very circumspect. He's very cautious. And I do, if you read between the lines, uh, back in June, he mentioned the, the, the scope of what he was going to release and how incriminating it would be. But he mentioned some few key words. Um, look, put it this way, I met Dr. Bachinik back when I worked, I'll put it this way, I worked for Signal Corps, White House Communications Agency, at the Reagan administration. So I get it. I, I was there in Washington for 30 years. Um, if you read between the lines, what he said about institutions triggered something, and I did some research. I've looked at Financial Times, I've looked at Zero Edge, I've looked at all the research. A lot of great people are doing these days. I am so glad you're waking up to what we need to cash in on. The Clinton Foundation and its seven sub-foundations are the institutions he's talking about, apparently. Talking to my mid-level friends back in D.C., the establishment is freaked because this covers Republicans, Democrats, the entire establishment is in the And that's what, why Hillary thinks she's going to be safe, is it brings them all down. No, it's all coming out, and they're all going down. So this, this WikiLeaks thing is mega-massive. What is important now is we seize on this, because Rahm Emanuel, and you are a genius, so was your caller, Donald, who took half my thunder. Look at it this way. When Bernard Sanzarsi um, invited Trump down there two weeks ago, absolutely. This is brilliant, just like Mexico. But I don't want to cash in on disaster, but the Clintons, let's put this out as a meme. You know, the Clintons have raped people. Now they're raping No, the they've been cashing in on the Haitians. Now let's go give the Haitians money, help them, and cash in against the Clintons. It, I mean, look, it's turnabout's fair play. It's, it's instant karma or near instant. They screwed the Haitians over. Haiti should be their downfall. Dead women and children, Alex. We've got proof. 10,000 people is nothing. If you look at Doctors Without Borders and you look at some of the other reports in the Jerusalem press, in Asian uh, France press, you'll see that about 170,000 people died as a direct result of two people building resorts in the north of Haiti and taking the rest of the money and pocketing it. That's your 94%. The cronies got their resorts in Haiti. The factory they built to employ, what, 20,000 people? Has 3,000 people working there in ridiculous conditions. We need to milk this. Rahm Emanuel said never let a good crisis go to waste. I really want to stress the fact that they're raping the world now. But it wasn't enough. Oh, exactly. Yeah, a lot of people say, I don't care about Haiti, whatever. Folks, they'll do it to you. What Christ said, what you do the least of me, you've done to me. And... <laughs> I just can't imagine raising billions, and then I could see, like, paying for your bills and whatever, and your, your helicopter flying out there. Okay, sure. But that's like a few percentage points. Keeping billions, and then your little pig-like daughter, you know, lives in a $10 million house. She bitches and says, oh, my parents screwed over the Haitians. You should give all your money back, uh, Chelsea or, or Webster Hubble's daughter, or you're just like your pig mommy. And I'm sorry, these people are pigs, and I hate them. Stinking, ugly, dumb pigs. I love being ruled by a bunch of hunchback, ugly-looking scum. This makes me feel like a low piece of crap, doesn't it, you? Thank you, Glenn. Great points. We're going to come back and talk to Robin in Virgin Islands, Canadian soldier in Canada, August in Arizona, and Johnny in Florida. We are back live. I'm going to hand the baton to David Knight, who's sitting in for Paul Watson, who pulled a muscle jogging. Amarillo 
We're going to go to Robin in the Virgin Islands. We're going to go to Johnny in Florida, August, and uh, Brandon and Canadian Soldiers. The Canadian Soldier's been holding a long time after we talk to Robin. We'll go to Canadian Soldier. Um, I'm going to shoot a special report dealing with the fact that I'm firing up the bat spotlight to Donald Trump. And last time I fired off the spotlight, I got a call about 24 hours later, but we'll see what happens. But I'm going to fire off the bat, the bat spotlight here, and I'm just going to really tell Donald Trump, you need to go to Haiti, in my humble view. Uh, you've already exposed Haiti. You've already talked about what's happened there. Uh, the former head of the Senate wants you to come there. The Clinton stole billions. The UN literally decided to use the water supply that was set up during the uh, earthquake as a latrine to crap in. People say it's incompetence. No, the UN hires the most demonic people. Everywhere they go, they rape children. They're the worst army I've ever heard of in history. And believe me, I'm a novice lay historian. I wouldn't say novice, actually lay historian. I'm really into history. I've forgotten more history than most, quote, historians know. Put it to you that way. You've heard all the professors and historians I've had on who are amazed by what I know, like the former technical head of the NSA, you name it. I was at dinner with him, and he goes, you know, you put it better than anybody I've ever heard. And I'm not bragging. I immerse myself in this is what I'm saying. And the move is, like they say in the movie Total Recall, get your ass to Mars. It's like get your butt to Haiti. Right as it blows out tomorrow, boom, fly in, land, go in, meet with the people, have a press conference, give them a million-dollar check. If Trump does it, I'll pledge a million dollars. Hell, I'll come up with the money. The listeners will to the Haitians. I want to help people. I'll pledge a million with you, Trump, to help the Haitians. I'll, I mean, I'll give 100% to their local uh, charity for water purification for kids. Or I'll ship a million dollars worth of Alexa Pure and Pro Pures in there. I'll hand deliver them myself. There. I'll put my money where my mouth is. History's happening here. I want to see this. Just like the folks that are charging in on MSNBC now and saying that uh, Clinton's a rapist, first Fox. It's going to spread. And by the way, listeners and viewers, you can do this. You need to tweet Trump right now. Go to Haiti, go to Haiti, go to Haiti. I'm going to shoot this video. It's going to go out. And I want you to get it off Infowars.com. It'll be out in a few hours. And send it to Trump. Hammer Trump with it. In a, in a nice way. And of course, the media will later say if he does it, oh, look, Alex Jones talked about election fraud, and then 24 hours later, Trump did the me, 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 me. Yeah, and we changed the destiny of the whole campaign. Now they're totally panicking. And I'm telling you, this is bigger than him on the election fraud. And again, Trump didn't just get that from me. He was already thinking that when I brought it up. It meshed with him. That's why he did it. It wasn't like I gave him the idea. It was just pushed him over the edge. And... Donald Trump's the real deal. He's hands-on. He's a real man. Doesn't mean he's perfect. None of us are. Um, the guy works 18 hours a day. And I tell you, the older I get, the more I work. It's real. I, I remember my late uncle. My dad's father had uh, four brothers, and he was the youngest of them. He was the last to go just a few years ago. Leonard. Leonard Jones. Great patriot. Great veteran. Great entrepreneur. Engineer. And he said... I was like, well, I'm going to quit working 18 hours a day soon. He goes, oh, Alex, he's just going to get worse. You're just going to work more and more. <laughs> and he goes, but be glad we're like that. We're not like everybody else wants to lay around all day. And that's what Trump's like. He's what we need, ladies and gentlemen. And it's going to be perfect. They're going to come after him. But Hillary Clinton, I mean, there's no choice. And I feel so sorry for people when I try to convince them on the street or whatever. I mean, I try to convince Clinton voters, you name it. They just giggle and laugh like they've got power and I'm dumb and they're with the winner. They don't know what moron chumps they are. And they're going to rue the day if Hillary gets in. But we need a landslide for Trump, folks. He is ahead in all the major polls. They're skewing him to say it's a dead heat. I told you that was coming. They rigged the debate. She, he should be elected just because of that. They've rigged the polls, everything. But I've got to really summon my energies Pray that God give me the energy to really do a focus message to Trump. And so that he's smart, though. I bet he's already thinking about going to Haiti right now. In fact, that just clicked a minute ago. I bet Trump's already thinking the same thing. We just need to push him in the right direction.
And if they got rebels there or whatever that rocket his plane when he lands and he dies, he's a bigger patriot. You know, it's no guts, no glory, folks, and Trump knows that. He's all in, people. He's got to take the bold move and not listen to some of the people around him. They aren't even bad people. They're just in over their heads. Ain't many people done this, folks. Aren't many people live this. We don't want to think of ourselves as hot shots at InfoWars. We live this. We don't act like this. We do it. And that's why we're about the best thing there is. And that's not saying much. It shows how much trouble we're in. I don't tell my crew to be arrogant. I tell them to be diligent, humble, focused, but realize we have a big destiny and a big responsibility. Robin in the Virgin Islands, uh, you're down there pretty close to the old hurricane. How are you doing? I'm great, Alex. Uh, God bless and keep you and your staff. Um, I really hope that if anyone hears either of the Clintons utter the word Haiti, that someone screams out, how dare you? How dare you? Um, Ooh, that's a good point. Everybody should mob them on TV or events when they bring up Haiti and say, you stole $2 billion, you killed 10,000 people with the U.N. crapping in the water. How do they even have the nerve to bring up the topic after America knows what we know? It's, it's outrageous. But on, on There you go. Point, I know. Yeah. Why are they so over the top? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, I was online this morning. I uh, got a link from NewsSentinel.com. Uh, it's on, up on YouTube now. I, I don't know if I have been in the dark about this. I, don't, I can't believe that I would have missed that if it's not new. So my question to you is, um, is this a new uh, stick of dynamite? Um, it's being reported. Uh, the title on YouTube is Bill Clinton's Biggest Secret, four minutes and three seconds, how he, in I believe it was 2001, started another foundation called the American India Foundation, whose purpose was to rebuild 100 villages. Um, no, I remember that. Dollars. I mean, all they do is they set them up and then literally give none of the money, like one or two, three percent. Uh, I, I vaguely remember that, yes. Yeah, so this group of guy gave a, a billion dollars to rebuild 100 villages, and seven of them were partially rebuilt. There's hundreds of Oh, yeah, look, 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 Bill and Melinda Gates have given over 100 billion. They get their own money back. It's all a scam. I, I, yeah, I think that, that, that their foundations, you know, that there should be uh, some sort of joint report showing how their different foundations have... I mean, what one's bad enough, but this one supposedly there's, there's bigger scandals. Bigger That's a great point. We will look into it. What do you think of the idea of Trump going to Haiti? I, I suspect he's already thought about that. I suspect his heart was already there, and um, he recognizes indeed um, the damages that uh, the Clintons the Clintons did with the country and what they stole. So I suspect he was already had something like that in mind. But it's an awesome idea. All right, great points, Robin. Thank you for holding. You're awesome. I really appreciate you. Uh, let's go ahead and go to another caller here. Uh, let's talk to Johnny, then Canadian soldier. Johnny, thanks for holding. Hey, Alex, how's it going? Good, brother. Um, uh, speaking of which, uh, you know, either Assange has been threatened or he's made a deal. Uh, he did request asylum to the AG based on the Hillary precedent with the email scandal. I really do hope I'm wrong. We need a real October surprise to get her kind of, you know, railed in and finally sent her to prison where she belongs. Um, moving on to the election, the polls, the debate, the elections are all rigged. I was actually at the Trump rally in Miami, and um, I'm black Latino, so um, you can see all the different ethnicities, uh, black people, white people, everyone, just standing remotely. Hillary can't even fill up a church uh, with all the people. Hillary cannot even people. fill up 50 chairs at most events. But she's supposedly yeah. going to beat Trump, yeah. So, the, I mean, clearly, what do you think the fix is in then? I, I hope not. Um, it has to be a massive landslide. I think that's the only way uh, Trump's going to be able to pull it off. Uh, we do have the numbers. Uh, he does have the support. Uh, you know, you go and, and, and check her you know, online attack guides on Trump, and there's all the comments are negative toward Hillary uh, and all positive toward Trump. There's not one positive comment toward Hillary. That's right. It's a it's total rejection, close. just like we saw a rejection of the Bushes. So if she goes ahead and steals it, don't they get there even more screwed? Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and then they want to call us. I mean, you, you watch NBC on uh, MSNBC on Morning Joe, and, and, and we're the conspiracy theorists. And, uh, you know, for pointing all these th all these things out and, and, the, and the, the lies and the bias, and we kind of just debunk everything in real time. 
And, you know, we're the conspiracy theorists, and they want to blame Russia for everything, for stubbing your toe at night with no proof. It's 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 just ridiculous, and you know you know people people need to wake up, and they, and they are waking up, and and Trump is part of this this amazing movement, and and well, I'm that's glad, right. Let's I'm be glad. clear: Alex Jones, Trump, Matt Drudge, anybody. We are just part of something larger that's happening, uh, and 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 it's key for you uh, when you see these rallies of all these people of every race who are human race together to put those images out and say what the media doesn't want you to see, because one of their biggest coups was saying if you're pro gun, pro family pro-private property, you're white and white only, and that other people couldn't be part of that. I can tell you, the Tea Party was never racist. It wants everybody to come be part of it. We're taking the Republicans over, not the other way around. And, and so it's important to break through that and come out to these events it, through our comfort zones. It's like putting a kid in softball. You know, white people need to be around people of other color who and learn they're just like everybody else and vice versa. We need to get through the liberal garbage of, of all this, you know, weird political correctness of being uncomfortable. We need to break it and come together. God bless you, Johnny. Uh, great points. You know, I've got a few more calls I want to get to, but I haven't gotten to this big story that we have exclusively on Infowars.com. Uh, I uh, covered it uh, some. I mean, I read some of the article, but I'm actually looking uh, for the story that goes with it. Maybe you guys can reprint it. I'm kind of a victim uh, of uh, how many of these videos and how many of these articles that I have. Uh, we've got the mystery EMS gurney taken backstage. Uh, this is a article from Infowars.com uh, that I've also not gotten to that I'm going to get to because uh, it's absolutely paramount. Uh, we've also got never before seen video, Obama on race. I am sad that whites still are superior. And he's here stirring up race in Kenya that was like 5% white in the 90s saying, I can't stand to see whites getting served first. And who knows that's even going on? He just invokes this to see if he can stir up his so-called family, because his real dad's Frank Marshall Davis. You can see him involved in psychological warfare and psychological manipulation. So I want to air that clip first. Uh, and then I've got the clip that Millie Weaver got uh, that shows the gurney being prepared for Hillary and her people panicking when they see it. But... Uh, here's the footage, never before seen video, in 1990 uh, trip to Kenya. The footage filmed and narrated by Obama's sister, Auma, shows the president on his first trip to Kenya as a young man in his 20s. Michelle Obama also accompanied her husband on the trip. It's her, them on the bus, the family riding around. And it, it goes in this exclusive video that's on Infowars.com. Here's a short clip. There's a lot of these videos. It's like 40 minutes of it, but here's a short clip of Obama. I'm deeply saddened by a sense that whites are still superior in this country, in some sense, that if you sit at a restaurant, they're served before a Kenyan is served. Uh, if you go through customs, a white person's going to have an easier time going through customs. I've experienced probably the Kenyan side of it, mainly because there have been times when I went, let's say, with Alma, my sister, who's obviously Kenyan, uh, to a restaurant where we'd have problems getting served, where the waiters would be rude. You know, if you look around at Kenya, when I look around at Kenya right now, you get a sense that, uh, although on the surface things are relatively tranquil, right beneath the surface, uh, things could explode at any point. Which, as a destabilizer he wants, then his cousin comes in, Odinga, who's Muslim, the country was barely Muslim back in the 90s. Now it's got a large minority that's blowing up malls, killing people, shooting people, taking over. It's black Muslims. But it doesn't matter because the Muslims are there spreading hatred of whitey. I guess hoping the few whites that are there evacuate so the country can collapse like Sudan. I love how he speaks with this kind of fake African accent like, like Hillary does when she's like talking to people in, in uh, Kentucky. She's like, how you doing there, boy? I had me some possum and grits. Well, Obama's like, I am here in Kenya. Good to see you. How are you doing, Habib? Oh, I'm sorry. You're not Habib. Oh, yeah. So it's just all this testing the manipulation, testing the, the creepy social justice warrior Chicago Ford Foundation CIA division garbage of the operative. But here's the video. Clinton staff panics as journalists capture video of Gurney being wheeled backstage. Now, this is the second time in Ohio. She hadn't been there in three weeks. She had the big coughing fit. Then a few days later, she collapses at ground zero. But we have her 45 minutes behind this, this tent with these armored uh, EMS people in body armor 
with the medical gurney. Now it's back, and if you're a radio listener, I'll describe it. Uh, Clinton staffers look concerned over InfoWars reporters captured a gurney being wheeled backstage at a Hillary rally in Akron, Ohio last night. Footage captured by Millie Weaver shows the hospital bed being moved as Clinton supporters wait patiently for Hillary to appear. Moments later, Clinton staffers seen looking nervously while taking photos of Weaver and her cameraman. The video shows an EMS worker exiting the backstage area with a stressed look on her face. Hillary security staff also looked nervous before Clinton finally appears. Let's roll that video for TV viewers. I knew that looked like a gurney. Oh my gosh. Okay, so they just wheeled a gurney backstage. OMG. Oh my gosh. I can't believe what we're seeing right now. They just wheeled a gurney. Look at, there it is. There it is. There's the gurney. They're wheeling a gurney backstage. Right there. They're wheeling it backstage. We are witnessing this happening right now at the Akron event in Ohio. There they go, back door with the gurney. There's the gurney. They're taking it backstage where Hillary Clinton is. Well, wow. that's in case she has her convulsion. I wonder if Hillary Clinton is having another medical episode yet again. And look, it's almost Just all white teachers. A gurney being brought backstage at Hillary's Akron, Ohio speaking event right now. This is pretty crazy. Is Hillary Clinton having another medical episode? I guess we'll find out. Oh, look, we have somebody taking a picture of us right now. This guy, apparently he thinks my reporting is that mesmerizing that he needed to take a picture from the Hillary campaign. Yeah, a little operative thinks he's in the Soviet Union. Or North Korea. Oh, I'm powerful. All access pass. What the hell? He's getting the gurney. Okay, we have These EMS. dumbass supporters. Looks like that's EMS coming out. He's got a walkie-talkie. He looks very stressed out. Look at his face. Oh my gosh, look at his face. Uh, Hillary's having a convulsion, just face. like last time. Forty-five minutes. Look at them. Look at them. They're all. When she's panicking. done having her convulsion. She'll on. come out. You can tell when there's something going on because they all start poking their heads out of the little hole. Like, are people noticing? Like, they're trying to get the crowds, you know. Millie Weaver's uh, awesome. Feel for the crowd to see if the crowd's getting upset or impatient. No, I'm sending her a bonus. Her head in no, we don't have a lot of extra capital. All right. Great reporter Millie Weaver and her team uh, there in Ohio. They just every time they go out and then they do stuff on the East Coast. They're amazing. We're so glad to have her part of the team. Uh, wow. Wow. That's why I want to get more funds in here so that we can get more reporters like her across the country to cover all this because things are just going to get crazier from here on out. Uh, clearly, uh, something's going on. They're freaking out. That's what the Secret Service told us to look for. It was them trying to cover up. Uh, I'm going to take a few calls here and we're going to go to a break and hand the baton to David Knight. And then perhaps he can get to the clip I didn't get to earlier in the show of Brett Hume last night attacking me. And when I heard he attacked me, I said, wait, let me guess. Uh, because we say the election's rigged, and we say that the debates are rigged. And they go, yeah, how'd you know that? Because Media Matters put it out yesterday afternoon, and Fox only attacks me when it's a Media Matters article. They're not allowed to say what they want. They don't just attack me randomly. They get directives, and then they are allowed to. So the fact that Fox is now following Media Matters, run by the White House, is a major benchmark in how they've sl slid into hell. Canadian soldier, you're on the air from Canada. Hey, how you doing, brother? Good, my friend. Thanks for holding. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you, uh, Mr. Lord Darkheart, for your generosity. I have been given my name by Hillary. It's like it's a really cool name. It's like Darkheart. Speechless. Uh, you can have, my CCA even saw me. I was like, oh my god, like, wow. I, I mean, I'm a I'm a generous person myself, but it's rare these days to find generous people like that. And I wanted to thank you, uh, like, for your generosity. It means a lot to me. Oh, wait. What, I mean, I guess you called in and I sent you, what, DNA forces you liked it? Or what was it? <laughs> yeah, and some other things. But the whole thing is is that just know that I got your six. I'm in the same trench as you, okay? Always. I'm always going to be in your trench. Even with without the what you sent me, I was all... Well, I'm that's humbling, brother. Trench. I only I only sent it to you because you, you, know, you said it was helping you, and we appreciate you. I wish I could help more people get stronger and as Tim uh, brother Tim uh, said making me harder to get killed and uh, I'm just worried about a Trojan horse and what Trojan horse is that brother well the thing is is that you know Trump has I'm an outsider looking in right 
So I'm looking at both sides of the fence. And I got a lot of points I want to bring up, but this is one of them that I really want to get out. He has too many establishment people inside. That's just going to continue what's already going on. No, no, I agree with that. But how are you supposed to get into an establishment thing when they cut all the keys? They've got all the locks. I mean, he's got a limited number compared to what I actually... He's got no establishment money. He's got the whole power structure against him. But he's got to have a few establishment guys to know how to navigate these waters. Well, I understand I understand the whole Republican thing and, and the Democratic thing. I totally do. But Dr. Pachenik, you know, said exactly what was on my mind. He's got to get put patriots in certain positions, like Secretary Strait of State, CIA. The CIA right now are acting like wild dogs, and over in, uh, in Syria. No, no, they're, well, they're they're funding anti-Christian groups. They they they've made a deal with Saudi Arabia and a bunch of Christians. I'm going to come back to you. Have you finish? Play this Brett Hume clip, hand the baton tonight, because Knight's got a lot to cover. Paul pulled a muscle, but he'll be back. Supposedly sitting in tomorrow. Uh, our little superstar, Paul, out there on those long jogs to the hills. We're going to come back to uh, 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 your call, uh, and then I'll get Knight's take on that. And we'll put the Brett Hume thing, and I'm going to punch out. Then we're going to have huge coverage tonight, 7 o'clock live, of the VP debate between Pence and Kane. Look, uh, Trump is a gamble. I think he's a safe bet. I'm not a gambling man. Hillary is abject pure evil. Now, I'm not a Machiavellian person, but I can look into the Machiavellian mindset. And from certain perspectives, Hillary would be more damaging to the establishment because she's such a rotting carcass politically and just oozes with all the skeletons and worms and, 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 and beetles and other scrofulous creatures of the past. But she could cause a nuclear war. I mean, my gut tells me she's super dangerous. Go with Trump. Bind with Trump. Even if he doesn't do perfectly, I'll be attacked. Our show won't be as big if Trump gets in. I'm not stupid. I mean, Hillary gets in. It, you know, we go into the danger zone, though. You know, it's like strapping rocket launchers on the bottom of the show. I don't want to. I want to defeat tyranny. I want to have a better world. And my gut tells me Trump's the way to go. The whole power structure, every enemy operation, every evil country, every evil leader is totally against Trump because he wants to make us great. Uh, he's not perfect. But he isn't, uh, he isn't there to try to screw the average person. And that's why I know Trump's for real. He's real in that his heart means well. He's not perfect, and he is influenced by some bad people. But I'll go with somebody that means well all day over somebody that's abjectly evil. Uh, but, but I hear you. I think he could be a Trojan horse because he's not going to be perfect. There's going to be some lampreys that attach to this you know, larger, uh, larger whale. Uh, but look, it's, for me, it's a no-brainer that no corporate money, no billionaire money, no elitist money is for Trump. The whole thing is against him. They're rigging everything. They're in full panic mode. What do you think, uh, Canadian soldier? Oh, I totally agree. I mean, this is like, like they're feeding us information, all the, the patriot, all, all the patriots, all the veterans, all the constitutionalists, all guys like, you know, that are in the same trench, they're feeding us information to be fixated on. Meanwhile, they already unleashed their battle plan. The plan is in motion. I mean, no, that's right. The, the, the internet's going over to multinational control. They're already manipulating. We already have controlled currencies, stock markets. It's all rigged. They admitted us. I agree. Yeah, but don't forget, like, Morrell already said what he was going to do, and look what's happening, right? Uh, look at the the false flags that I warned you about that are going to happen, and they blamed it on Russia, the bo the, the bombings. Now... No, you said look for, I, look for forces to get bombed about a month ago, and they'll blame it on Russia, and they tried to, yeah. Yeah, and now what I see happening is is they won't let... They can't let Trump win. The reason why is four established... Four... Uh, four... Um, administrations will fall with treason. I, I know, I, I'm going to give you a date. April 2001. No, no, listen, Canadian soldier, I got to jump and get the other calls in the name of the night, but, but you're right. She hopes to be too big to fail, so corrupt that it's tied to everything else like a cancer in the body, so if you cut it out, the body dies. That is their game plan to make us dependent. You're absolutely right. 
Speaking of that, it's why we have the highest quality storable foods, the best uh, non-GMO heirloom seeds, the best solar panel systems and controllers, the best everything for survival at InfoWarsStore.com. And, you know, we make the joke saying we're all Russian agents, so I was out horseback riding with the family this weekend, and I pulled my shirt off at the end and had you know folks take a photo so I could say, I don't know why folks think I'm like Putin, because you know, his famous uh, shirt off horseback riding. But I took two photos, or we took two. Uh, there's a war on for your mind at InfoWars.com. It's the 21st century cavalry. And again, I'm still as big muscularly as I ever was. In fact, bigger. But we're talking 60, 60 plus pounds of fat, folks. is gone or more. I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, and that's why folks see me with a suit on and they say, oh, you're still fat. Uh, no, I'm not with my with my shirt off. I take my pants off. I mean, I'm going to do, actually do a shoot, I think, in some you know, Calvin Klein underwear or something, you know, I'm going to lose a few more pounds because I've been picking out. I don't even hardly work out anymore, taking Super Mel Vitality and uh, taking the Oxy Powder every few months and uh, taking the DNA Force uh, and things like X2. I mean, it just, it's like I'm 20 years old again uh, and people can see the results. I mean, I have lost so much fat. You should experience this for yourself. It helps fund the operation. InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com or 888-253-3139. Look, I know we're loaded with calls, but David's got a lot to cover. I wanted to play uh, this quick clip of Brett Hume and then get David's take on that in WikiLeaks. Because Wiki, you know, WikiLeaks, I'm really questioning this. David kind of pulled me back from total hatred of Assange after I bet on him, believed in him. He said it was coming out months ago. He never releases it. There's a certain point where the baiting's got to stop. I think waiting longer is, is really going to sink this thing. I don't think Assange is smarter than the average person out there. And... I just don't know how long he can wait. Uh, but first, here's Britt Hume saying we're crazy because we think there's election fraud and then misrepresenting. We didn't say some guy was passing something off to him. We said they were fading down his mic, which they later admitted. We said that he interrupted him 40 plus times and her six times. We said that they were fading his mic down so we couldn't hear him on air at certain points because I'd have to strain to hear him. These are tricks they use. And the debate commission admits Trump's right. Does that make him credible? No, the media makes more fun. But why this is really big is hours before Media Matters put out this article, and you can hear Brett Hume and his producer doing the piece word for word, line for line, quoting Media Matters. They are now following White House directives. Here it is. After President George W. Bush had debated Democratic nominee John Kerry, a blurry photo of Mr. Bush taken from behind ignited claims he'd been wearing a wire during the debate. Mr. Bush's tailor said it was a pucker in his coat, and Secret Service sources told the Hill newspaper that it was a strap holding a bulletproof vest in place. But the conspiracy, conspiracy theories, excuse me, never quite went away. Now, as we reported last week, they are back again, this time about Hillary Clinton at the debate. And our report last week did not succeed in dampening them. For the latest, on the latest theories, here's Fox News Chief Washington Correspondent James Rose. James? I go, what is Lester Holt doing? Something's wrong with his earpiece. With only days to go until the second Trump-Clinton debate, many remain focused on the first one, with fresh allegations of conspiracy sprouting like weeds. Alex Jones of Infowars.com zeroed in on moderator Lester Holt of NBC News. Back this up 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. He's saying, say that again, say that again. It is an earpiece, not a law. Here, so you say it again? Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, the debate commission said no okay. earpieces. He's clearly getting orders when he attacks mm -hmm. Trump later. And then they put the earpiece back in, they clip it back on his collar and put it back on. And by the way, they cut out the mainstream articles where they said the debate commission said no. In fact, the Commission on Presidential Debates published no rule forbidding the moderator from using an earpiece, only one that forbade anyone to speak to Holt through that earpiece who was not Marty Slutsky, the commission's executive producer since 2000. Notice the light inside her podium there. Still other theories have focused on the podium used by Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton, with some pointing to what seemed like an inordinate amount of attention paid to it in the minutes preceding the main event, and others suggesting Clinton benefited from a built-in teleprompter, sending her talking points in real time, complete with a controller of some kind. Look at Hillary's podium. There's a light that is turned on right now. And there, it shut down. Now, in this clip, if you look closely, you're going to see where Hillary looks like she's scrolling. By the way, I don't know who this podium. guy is. It's the Clinton campaign. I, I didn't say they had a computer. Sort of secret mechanics into the podium. It would have been a really foolish route to take because people would have found out. And it would have made hit pause. 
I'm not saying she had a computer in a panel, and I don't. We said paperwork. And the guy clearly carries it off, and we were asking, "What is it?" Okay. But what really makes me mad here is they're cutting all these other people. We don't know who they are. I'm not bashing them. I just don't know who they are. As if I'm saying it, mixing it all together. They admittedly cut his mic off, so the whole time the crowd couldn't hear him, and he wasn't getting cheers. If he got a cheer, Holt would cut in and cut it off, but let him cheer for Hillary. So again, they build these straw men. But that's not even the issue we're getting at here. Let's continue. Terrible. I think this really points to a low level of trust in the media. People are really suspicious of what prominent news organizations, including mine, tell them. And they think there's some sort of secret truth that's being covered up. Late today, we heard from Frank Farenkopf Jr., one of the co-chairs of the Commission on Presidential Debate. Frank Farenkopf? Was outfitted with a light, as well as note paper and a pen, standard issue for each That's right, trust but us, there's nothing going on. No teleprompters. <laughs> In full disclosure, I just used one to deliver that tag. And I have an earpiece. Me as well. Yes. Well, there you go. So we've obviously were part of the conspiracy. <laughs> um, let, me, let me ask you about another theory that arose, which is that we, we, we noted last week that a man we discovered was Brady Williamson, longtime Democratic aide, worked on many campaigns, working on the Hillary campaign. Dated all the way back to the 80s. Back to 1984, in my memory came out and he picked up notes that were on Hillary Clinton's uh, lectern, which he was entitled to write during the debate. There he is, there you see, there you see, you see him there. And he picked up, he picked up her, uh, her notes right. and later we, you can, well, it was alleged that he then handed them off to Lester Holt, which was proof of some nefarious conspiracy. But if you know, so there he is, that's Brady Williamson, the longtime Democratic operative. Uh, taking Hillary Clinton's notes after the debate has ended. And the allegation was that he was then hold, handing them off to Lester Holt. If you look at the video... Right, that's enough. And, we and they go on to basically say this is what I'm saying. And I didn't say that. I didn't say those computers in the, in the uh, lectern. All that's made up. They don't have a saying it. This was us a week ago, by the way. They were saying we were still talking about it. No, we were talking about it a week ago. Basically, everything you see is a deception. But the biggest news here is this is all talking points for Media Matters. They direct it, Fox goes running to cover this up. But listen, they say they wouldn't have electronics in the lectern. I'm not saying that. I don't think it was there. What about her falling down and the media cutting it before she falls down and saying she didn't fall down? That's bold. And that's the whole point. You guys are bold. You are getting caught lying. It's why you have no credibility. David Knight, you're going to be hosting the debate tonight with Leanne McAdoo and others for the uh, VPs. What do you make of all this craziness? Well, you know, Alex, I think it's interesting that uh, they cut this piece, as you pointed out, the talking points from Media Matters. And Britt Hume is selling this idea that, oh, look, they said there's some difference in the audio and there's not any. They've already had the debate commission announce that there was a, a, a difference between their microphones. And if you look at that, you can see, you can not only hear it, but you can see that his microphone is considerably further from his mouth. It's considerably lower. This microphone is down about here, if you're looking at it. Her microphone is right next to her mouth. And you and I both know, anybody that's ever talked in a microphone, both know. It's way more lose. personal when you're up on yes, the mic. you got to yes. eat the mic. You lose, exactly. You lose the presence. Uh, you introduce, uh, it, it gets thin. It gets uh, uh, not only lower volume, but you also get this reverb from the area the that he's in. Yeah. You're looking pretty good, baby. Why don't you <laughs> let me take care of that for you? There you go, sweetheart. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I, I mean, what we're seeing, and of course, one of the things I didn't talk about, which I thought was one of the most interesting uh, observations that people made a couple of days after that. And I did a thing on it last night on the Nightly News. I can play those clips here in just a couple of seconds. Um, people said, hey, it looks like she's doing uh, hand signals to Lester Holt. You notice that whenever Donald Trump, and, and you can see the videos on YouTube, whenever Donald Trump is talking about something, she's got a, a prepared zinger that she wants to insert. She does a little uh, thing next to her nose. And she did it so many times. And, and when you, exactly, right there. And when she would do that, then Lester Holt would come back to her to give her an in for that particular thing, not asking, not changing the subject, but throwing it back to her. And I got to say, if that wasn't a uh, if that wasn't a sign for Lester Holt, she may have psoriasis or something on the side of her nose. That was just obvious <laughs> as watching professional baseball when they're doing yeah. all the signs and the. I mean, it was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Watch this. Play play the uh, clip of the sting uh, for me uh, if you guys can run that up there. Watch this, Alex. This is the very end of the trailer for the sting. It was Paul Newman. Robert Redford. This time, they might get away with it. Yeah, this time they might get away with it, right, Alex? <laughs> I mean, it was like baseball. Time. It was like they were yeah. doing these hand signals. Oh, yeah.
Yeah, absolutely. It's classic. And they had a poker player uh, analyze it. Uh, they took that video down. But there, you can see a lot of different. She would touch her nose, though. And, and everybody pointed this out. When, when, no, leave him, leave him. When she didn't do it, he would interrupt. I mean, every like 30 seconds. Yes, yes, exactly. Exactly. So I thought that was very suspicious. But look, tonight we're going to have a situation with a couple of VPs. One of the things I think is very important that's been one of the key issues of this election is the Trans-Pacific Partnership. The mainstream media is trying to sell us this false notion that both Hillary and Trump agree that TPP should not be passed. And Hillary has said it's the gold standard. And tonight, they've got two VP candidates that are uh, have been on record as strong supporters of TPP. So what you see from the Wall Street Journal is they're asking, will TPP rise from the dead? It has never been dead. The only way you're going to stop this thing is if Donald Trump gets elected. Hillary Clinton is for this, and uh, the only way is if you get Donald Trump elected and if he is not taken over after the election by uh, people from the Council on Foreign Relations or the Globalists or whatever. If he can stay on this because he's authentic on this issue, Alex, it's one of the things that really changed my mind about Donald Trump. You know, I wasn't a supporter of him early on. Uh, I was very much opposed to him. But when I realized that he's been talking about NAFTA and these trade deals that have destroyed our economy for 25 years. That's right. He was paying an early, to, early, uh, early enemy of it. Yes. T paying uh, massive amounts of money to run ads in the New York Times to tell people what a bad deal this was. On that issue, he is clearly authentic. He clearly yeah, he hates screw Trump. jobs against himself, his family, and he has some love of the country. Obviously more for his family. Who doesn't? That's right. And, and he just doesn't like being screwed. That's why they're so scared because they know they've got one-sided deals. Speaking of the devil, I'm going to shoot a video right now when this show ends where I'm going to put a plea out to Trump to go to Haiti. I'm going to show the Senate leader saying, please come here. The Clintons stole billions. 10,000 died when the U.N. stole the money for the water treatment. Adon Salazar has already banged out a big article on this. This is already a big meme. Americans call on President Trump to visit hurricane-ravaged Haiti. Sir, uh, Trump, please go to Haiti and show them, again, what a real president looks like. I agree. Go to Haiti. Help the folks. But bigger than that... We, we're going to have another article, a blurb, where the leaders want him to come. He can go there and destroy the Clintons and then move on, uh, showing she doesn't show up when it hits the East Coast. So what do you think of that, David? I think this would be the ultimate coup de grace uh, or the, the, the death blow politically. I think this is the October surprise. Well, you know, Alex, at this point in time, we, we, optics are very important. Uh, the Hill points out that more than 40 percent of Americans can't even name who the VP candidates are. We've got not only low info voters, but we've got no info voters. So the so optics he is he's there taking care of black kids, which the exactly. truth is he always has. And exactly. so they're kids, period. But let's just play against Hillary, who actually robbed the black kids. He's there helping them. Yeah, if you're going to make any changes at this late uh, stage of the game with the people who are low or no info voters, these are people who have not invested any time in finding out what the issues are, and they're not invested in either one of these parties in terms of a group think. So if you want to get them, it's going to take something like that, some kind of a visual that is very striking. Yeah, look, I'm, to ready, get I'm ready to provide the, the healthy 360 wins. They need the help. They're good people. The Clintons robbed them. It's you reap what you sow. It should be Trump that delivers the political blow that defeats them and takes them out politically while bringing money and help to the Haitians. It's a 360 win. I don't do anything that's a cold heart of manipulation. Is this a stunt? It's sickeningly delicious. It's total justice delivered in a heavenly fashion. I have been praying for the answer. I'm telling you, this is one of the big ones. We have 34 days left. We're about to go to break. I'm going to hand the baton to you, David. We need the funding, folks. Great folks are taking over, exposing Clinton for rape live on TV. Keep it up. Buy the probiotic, 23% uh, off on DNA Force right now. Infowarsstore.com, Infowarslive.com, or call toll free 888 253 3139. Get the free app at Infowars.com forward slash app, the new app with video and text and everything else. More is getting added in a couple weeks. David Knight's taking over nightly news tonight. Live coverage, so everybody you know, it's part of a revolution to tune in to Patriot coverage of the VP de debate, Infowars.com forward slash show. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight in this final segment of the show. And tonight we're going to be covering the vice presidential debate. As I was saying before the uh, break, about 40% of Americans don't even know who the VP candidates are by name. They certainly don't know anything about them. So we're going to learn something about that tonight. But most of these people aren't really going to pay attention. The real debate is going to f be the debate that follows, the debate that's in the media. But more importantly than the debate that's in the mainstream media is going to be the debate that is on social media. So 
with that in mind, what we've done, and we did it with the last debate, uh, we did, I think it was about 25 videos. I mean, that's part of the problem. We do so many videos that so many of them get lost. We went through and we looked at a lot of statements by Hillary Clinton and by Donald Trump, and we cut short vignettes. That's a good way to try to communicate after the debate with people who are on social media. That is a very important way to try to control. The media is going to try to spin and control this. You need to put out the issues to people, the uh, short clips. That's the tools that we're providing for you to use. You're part of the information war. What happens on social media after this debate is going to be far more important than what happens during the debate. I can guarantee you that's going to be the case. Now, today we saw an amazing statement by Bill Clinton slamming Obamacare. He says, it's the craziest thing in the world. <laughs> I agree with him, but this guy is a master liar. Listen to what he has to say. He says, you've got this crazy system. Oh, and by the way, he was speaking yesterday in Flint, Michigan. You know, Michigan, where globalism and Democrat socialist policies have destroyed the economy, shipping the factories abroad and destroying their economy with the kind of welfare state that this represents. And it was his wife that's the craziest thing in the world is, is not even Obamacare. What was even crazier was Hillary Care. She was a first lady and decided that she was going to swallow in one gulp the entire health care system. And she was criticized for that. They said, no, 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 no. You got to do it gradually. Understand, as he's pointing out now what everybody understands and sees, that Obamacare is a failure. He says, uh, as uh, the spokesperson for Trump said, we got skyrocketing state insurance markets collapsing, skyrocketing cost, businesses struggling to comply with job killing mandates. Even Clinton understands this isn't going to work. It was never a plan to work. We've pointed that out over and over again here at InfoWars. Alex has pointed it out. I've pointed it out. It is an intermediate step to create uh, a, a failure so they can come in and enact Hillary Clinton's single payer system where the government controls everything. But he goes, he says, you've got this crazy system where all of a sudden, 25 million more people have health care. Oh, we can't have that, can we? Then the people are out there busting it, sometimes 60 hours a week, winding up with their premiums doubled and their coverage cut in half. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I say Clinton's blunt remarks run in direct contrast to Hillary's previous promises to build on Obamacare. No, she's going to still build on Obamacare. You got to understand what a master liar this guy is. And I saw this and I, I put this in the nightly news last night, along with those clips about Hillary Clinton doing the sting stuff, rubbing her nose. When I saw him at the DNC, he got up there. He had a really tough uh, act that he had to put on for people. He had to talk about this woman that he loves and has stayed with for many decades. And we know nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, they've got a marriage of convenience. And uh, he got up there and he had to start talking about how he fell in love with Hillary. And as I'm watching this, it's like, he's talking about this girl. I saw this girl, so forth and so on. And I tweeted out at the time, I said, you know, he reminds me of Mark Twain talking about the art of lying. Some people are so masterful at lying that it's actually entertaining to watch him. I'll play a little bit of clip of this as we go out. Let's play that uh, clip of him at the DNC. Let's go ahead. You this sense of strength and self-possession that I found magnetic. <laughs> After the class, I followed her out. Is that Hillary? Intending yeah. to introduce myself. <laughs> I got close enough to touch her back. Yeah, that's the beauty he's thinking of. <laughs> Somehow I knew this would not be just another tap on the shoulder. But I might be starting something I couldn't stop. A demonic nerd. Yeah, starting something he couldn't stop. You know, that's a real issue. The thing is, he has deceived people on the relationship with his wife, but even more importantly, he's deceived people on the fact that it's not consensual. Join us tonight, 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern.